Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari 2600 games. Welcome to Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, welcome to the show. Welcome mm -hmm. to everybody out there. Mm -hmm. Got a lot going on today. Oh my goodness. Uh, we've got five games. Five. Yep. Uh, tap a mole, <laughs> whack a mole, and whack -a -mole. we're going to be playing another uh mole whacking game as well okay um which is a prototype it's not a homebrew okay um that's why i didn't list it uh okay. we're gonna be t playing atomic meltdown so we'll have three three mole games and then atomic meltdown cave ropes uh and then uh the newest version of night guy in low res world wow castle days that's a lot of games <laughs> it is uh, awesome. i think a lot of them are, are the short ones and then we're gonna have the the night guy in low res world, okay. which would be a big one okay oh and spiceware just joined Yay, us hello. welcome daryl i want to thank all the twitch subscribers supporting the show al nefer armscar coder cafe man 2d captain classic headlock charles and check dianoid dan avc dr napalm glenn main gray defender ground trooper johnny wc 23 jupiter storm 17 carl g croco 2600 Mark Spacek, Metal Atari 1969, Miss Command, MK Smith, Mr. Fix, Nathan Strum, Packrat VG, Quo Hog 2600. It's a new name. Uh, RC7E, Repentless VG, Ricardo Pem 6 Sweet, Socrates 0603, Spartan 581, Spice, where? The person in question. Uh, S. Ramirez 2008, The D Train 37, The Welshman 89, Thunk is Tiki 10K, Teetfos, and Trek MD. You can support the show too and subscribe for free. You link your Amazon Prime to your Twitch Prime, and then your name will appear beside mm -hmm. Tanya. Uh, I don't or have much space. Whoever is sitting there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't have much space. There's a cat squished right in between yeah, us. Yeah, he's here, kind of pushing us apart. We don't really want to disturb him. He's no. very, very happy it's right very now. Very cute. Exposing yes. his little, well, big beige belly. And um, uh, I've added something, if you can see it right here, right there. Oh, oh! most recent oh, sub oh nice so it'll say who the most recent person that has subscribed to the channel yeah. and jupiter storm 17 uh subscribed just before the show oh wow so That's that cool. is what's happening and i fixed the scroll as the suggestion last episode mm -hmm. um because people were saying oh it's in front of the it's in front of the cat cam Oh, and you can't see the cats. And you can't see the cats probably because oh. they were scrolling. Oh, okay. And so I've put it in behind the cat so, cam. So you now. still see them all scroll up. You That's still good. see them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that makes a tiny sense. bit less of that them. So. Um, yeah, soon there'll be nothing left on that screen. You won't see it. Just a ton of stuff. <laughs> there, Drexel just subscribed. So hey, he's going to be replacing that name right here. It's going to say Drexel very shortly. Hopefully. Um, it worked with it Jupiter did. Storm. It did. It just took a... It took so it took a little bit. So mm. it'll take a little bit. Um, for to replace the name mm. um, hopefully it'll work mm -hmm. um, so make sure you follow and, and subscribe and click on all like all the things twitch youtube facebook instagram mm -hmm. and twitter well thank you very much for the for the uh, compliment on the galagon shirt mm -hmm. um, it is very nice i love it we're not playing galagon today i think it's the first time i've worn it when we're it, not playing galagon yeah that's true that's true you yeah. got it at the actual prg last year right i did actually yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so they had uh, they had them there for sale yeah a limited amount of them and i was yeah. able to grab one yeah 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 our new shirt was supposed to come yesterday oh that's oh it was but it hasn't yeah. arrived uh on the little line item for ups it says <laughs> delivery attempt yeah. failed oh I was home yeah. at five o'clock. They said they tried at five o'clock. Yeah. They probably drove by and glanced our way and kept driving. Yeah. Um, so it never got here. Um, so hopefully they'll attempt again. And uh, yeah. We, we, we do, not getting into too much detail, have <laughs> yeah. an entrance that's a little bit hard to find. But it's a bit weird. It's, it's a bit unconventional. It's a bit unconventional. All the pizza delivery people seem to find they it. They find it just fine. So I don't how know. does UPS miss it's, it? It's if you're walking on the street, you'll see it. But I think if you're in a car, I yeah. think people drive by, and I think that's the problem. So if and they're driving and looking, they yeah. probably won't see it. So I find oh, it updated Drexel. Yay. Yay! I find food delivery people pick pick their stuff up and walk up and down they do but like like delivery trucks they'll drive around they'll more. drive around and it's very i find that very frustrating they don't actually try and 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 find the space so yeah anyway i digress <laughs> we've got some 
mail here. Actually, Get I want to say mail. hi to everybody in the chat that's yes. joined us today. Esther Mirrors 2008 Arena Foot. Uh, no Zookeeper t-shirt yet. No, I haven't mm. seen one mm. being proposed. Maybe. Maybe they won't. That's I don't know. Uh, Dan AVC, Pack Rat VG. Oh, what is this in my hand? Pack Rat. Let's see. <laughs> we'll see in a second. Uh, Miss Command, welcome to the show. Yep. Um, we showed your picture. Yes. yes. Yeah. James showed me. Yes. I like the pink. I the like pink the pink shirt. Well. It works really well. I'm, I'm very much considering a pink one though. I like the red too. Actually, yeah. the red's really nice. But... We can get a pink one of the new one. Maybe. Oh, maybe. Well, the new one's different though. A different yeah, we'll color see. scheme. We'll see. Uh, like Dan ABC, Metal Atari 1969, uh, Spiceware, uh, Carl G. Did I say yes. that? Armscar Coder, uh, Al Nefer. Jupiter Storm 17, resubscribe to Flat Kits, uh -huh. MK Smith, who else? I think that's it for now. Oh, oh Leo Scanty made it just in time. Yes. So I got this, uh, picked this up from the post office today. It says uh, Pack Rat Video Games. Why would Pack, Bat, Pack Rat be mailing me? <laughs> I can guess. I can guess. You I think it's. Almost always no. Yeah. Um, because we saw it a couple episodes ago, um, what the 8,000 level patch was. Like the 4,000 I, oh. I have, but this is for, I think, the 8,000 because I achieved the 8,000 not oh. too long ago. Oh, exciting. Here it is. Very nice. Pack rat logo. Oh, nice. With the running, running rat. And mm -hmm. here it is. Ooh. Spaceman Splorf. Nice. Pull it back a little. It's a little uh, focus. Oh, I didn't even focus. Oh, we're we're, we're a little. Well, we're okay. We're a bit soft. We're Maybe a bit I'll soft. take a look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the uh, Spaceman Splorf Yay. drink coaster. So am I putting my drink? No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. This will not <laughs> get soiled and soaked with beer. No, no beer. Very nice. Very shiny. Especially red Thank beer. you yeah. so much. Pack Rat VG. Mm. And I read a bit of it out last time, but I'll read it again. Space Core Sanitation Division, Methane Processing Station, Kplar. There we go. Gotta use it. Mm -hmm. If you send me two, I'll use one. But I'm not going to use one yeah. if it's the only one I have. <laughs> Dear Spaceman Explorer fan, in recognition <laughs> of your incredible score of 8,000 points or more, nice. you've attained the Golden Spanner Award. This also puts you in the ranks of 4th Class Engineer Lavatorial Division, congrats. Your skill has helped repel the dreaded space pirates from planet doom, and it's an outstanding achievement. You are one of the best. Be very proud. Mm -hmm. Enclosed with this letter is an additional gift, just for those that scored 8,000 plus. So there's two levels. At 4,000 you get the patch, 8,000 you get oh, the coaster. Nice. Everyone has, has to have something to put his or her cold drink on. Oh. Thank you for your service. That's really nice. Too. Please note that this patch should be stitched to appropriate clothing. It can be attached with adhesive too. Mm -hmm. But note this backing on the patch itself is plastic. This is not glue. I, if you, this is a generic letter for oh, both. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. if you get eight thousand right off the bat, you would get that and the patch. Nice. I'm guessing. Yeah. And that's why the patch information is here. Sincerely, Morg, uh, director of sanitation. Is this plastic or is it cardboard? And a little cardboard. nod. Yeah. At the bottom. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Page zero. Nice. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. That is awesome. Oh, it says Packrat Video Games LLC at PackratVG.com. Mm. So if you no have not played um, Spaceman Splorf, it is really, really fun. Um, one button, flappy bird type mm. with incredible graphics, incredible music, mm. and patches to earn. Very proud and happy of that. And speaking of patches, this is the patch. Yes. And I have somewhere to put it now. Yes, he does. If Tanya would like to yes. <laughs> pres present. Oh, this, the I tell patch. you, the number of hours I put into this. Okay, so stand up, please. Well, you have to make sure you're on camera. Well, no, stand up. I'll put it on you. Oh, we're going to reveal it that way? Yeah, okay. there you go. So. Da, 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 da. I can't see it yet. That's okay. Okay. It's okay. Yep. It's okay. All right. Let me turn it on. It, uh, uh, uh. No, not yet. Turn it's it on on things. camera. Okay. Sit down so that you're actually in focus. <sighs> All right. Silliness. She <laughs> made it. Pat Crab VG says. <laughs> okay. So there are some special features of my wondrous zero page sash. 
Yeah, um, point out the special features. The special features, there is a mesh on it, so he doesn't actually have to sew the patches down. So I'm going to put the Pack Rat Golden Spanner. Right. It's got pockets. It's got these little pockets so that it'll hold them in place and I won't damage them. That's right. So I've earned the Sp Spider Fighter yes. Activision Hockey Team, the uh, Stampede Trail Drive, mm -hmm. and the Pack Rat. Yeah, and then there's the Knockout the, Kings uh, at the top here. Oh, oh, right over the top. Yeah, right yep. over the top. Boxing. And for those days when you achieve your goal, let's see if I can find Which it. I did not today. Well, you did in the past. Yeah. But I got the patch today, so that works. Can I turn off the light? Yeah, can you turn see off it? the light. Turn off the light. Which one? This one? Oh, yeah, that one. That one's probably the best. Oh, they're stepping on cats. I'm not stepping on them. Probably won't see it too well with the light on. Yeah, we That's pretty good. So, you can see it lights up. <laughs> there you go. All the colors of the rainbow. That's right. The Activision rainbow. There we go. <clears throat> fancy. <laughs> Very fancy. All right. And if you sit down, I'm going to focus because this is not. Okay. Nice. <laughs> That's right. That was a lot of hours of work, I have to say. <laughs> Very, very nice. So I feel like a Boy Scout <laughs> with, with this sash. I love it. It's great. It's colorful. So, yeah. So the next patch I'm going to go for is on uh, next Tuesday. Okay. I'm going to be going for Oink. Oink. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. so at that point, then uh, if I win, I'll bring out the sash. Yeah. I don't have an Oink patch, but yeah, there we go. Yeah. Everybody likes it. <laughs> You had me at the lights. That is Royal Gaming Garb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much for making that. Oh, no, you're very welcome. I'll it wear was it for a, a little lot bit. Of fun. All I'll you have I'll to wear do... it for the intro. Okay. Yeah. All all I need is the kernel of a project, and it just <laughs> it just spirals rapidly out of control. You need to wear this at next year's PRG. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my God. No. You need to walk around with it on. Yes. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> No. Um, I have uploaded a new emote for the channel. Let's try it oh, out. Oh, you have! <laughs> that's awesome. There it is. Oh, that's so good. And those are for those <laughs> those times where I get frustrated with yeah. the game. Nice. The game's not over, and I've died, and I just slam on there yeah. and reset it. There we go. Nice. So it's for all of you people out there who are subscribed. Want to, yeah. yeah, who are subscribed, who want to put that in the chat mm. when I start getting really mad at the game <laughs> <laughs> and start rage resetting it. Mm. So it's based off the uh, design by Nathan Strom and Thomas Yench. I um, uh, repositioned the scratches so it's under the rage yeah, reset. Yeah, that makes on sense. This one. You want to see it nice. And it's in a nice square. Nice. Yeah. Um, and it's also available as a shirt, which is coming any day any now. Any day now. <laughs> as soon as UPS finds the house. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we actually have an interview at the end of today's show with me. You're going to do it. Okay. You're going to okay. be asking the questions. Uh, Leandra Sa from More Work Games has sent over a big list of questions mm. that I'll be answering at the end of the stream. Mm -hmm. Um, it's about 40 questions, so we might make it a two-parter. We'll see how long it takes. Um, uh, there's a program that was uh, released. It was f it's for Windows. It's called Voxalot. It's an Atari Vox Plus tracker, in the loosest sense of the word. What you know what the Atari Vox does? Yes. It, does it does two main things. One is to keep score mm. and just keep memory too. You can keep saved games in it as well, um, just like Penult mm. does. But it also speaks. And what uh, this person d did, which I don't have their name here, that's terrible, um, is w they made a program that allows you to uh, make a list of the phenomes. Is that what it is? Um, all the different sounds that uh, in the English language, anyway. He, he didn't extend it to other languages. Um, uh, Smitty B, thank you very much, Carl G. He said, a while ago I developed an editor for the 7800 for Atari Vox phrases so that I could create speech without having to compile a ROM and flash it before being able to hear and possibly find it in need of more editing. 
problem with the 7800 version is that A, it requires 7800, B, requires 7800 flash cartridge, C, requires copying the resulting speech data by I. I recently got a 2600 adapter 2, which I have one as well, actually I have two of them, which opened the possibility of making an editor for Windows that I could work entirely on PC and just save the speech data and directly import it into my projects. Naturally, I did just that, and given that this lifts the 7800 specific restrictions, I figure you 2600 developer lot might get some use out of it. So people can now test Atari Vox phrases outside of a program in Windows and make sure it all sounds good before they put it into their games. Cool. So super, super handy. Mm. Yeah. Um, I could have used the Rage Reset the other day. <laughs> uh, new box art released since the last episode. Two new box arts. The first one is Tower of Rubble. Um, Al released the box art of that today. So let's take a look at that. It is mighty and awesome. Let's put that over here. Nice. Everybody can see it. They can't just yet, but they will. So here is. Oh, I've got the first game there. There we go. Tower of Rubble, set in. See, it's got the story on here. We didn't know the story before. Ah. Set in 1932, you're a British adventurer who's just stolen valuable gold mask from the ruins of an old Inca tower on a small deserted island off the coast of Ecuador. What seemed like an easy pickup quickly turns into a nightmare. Soon after snatching the golden mask from its pedestal and walking back to leave the island, you find that hot lava is emerging from the sea that surrounds the island. You're trapped. <laughs> and to make things worse, the ver at the very moment the tower awakes and turns out to have a very malicious personality mm -hmm. and a very menacing looking... Um, a tower. A tower with That's the really eyes, nice. with yeah. the glowing pinky purple eyes yeah. love the colors really on it good. al yeah. says tower of rubble by dianoid this bark box art is by david dries uh layout by nathan strum was just debuted today oh this is what i'm said actually when i posted it mm. the latest in a huge lineup of incredible atari 2600 homebrews about mm. to be released in the atari age store and we were very proud to premiere this incredible game last year on the stream and interview dianoid last year mm. as well um, there's another new release coming out. Uh, it's a Adventure 2 XE. Uh, this is not for the 2600, but it is coming out from Atari Age. And why not show it? Because it's really cool because of the box it's in. Or the, um, the case that Al has been able to get. Take a look at this. Adventure 2 XE. It is a transparent, transparent-ish case. Mm, and it's kind yes, of like a I smoky black to yeah, it. Yeah, a smoky gray. Yeah. Um, and uh, Al said in uh, the Discord, the Atari Age Discord, in response to when Adventure 2 XE will be coming out, soon, I hope. Plan is to have it go on sale with a bunch of other games, which realistically will be sometime in September. Mm. But hope to have everything uh, printed for the games this month. That's a plan at any rate. So that's the latest update on when all these games will be coming out mm. is now September-ish. Mm. And just with the sheer number of them, that's that uh, makes sense. <laughs> There's a lot. And he's still releasing box art. Mm -hmm. Very nice box. Nice again. Nice cart. Yes, mm. definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, Speak and Spell also works for testing phrases. That's very true. Um, and... News on the PitCat binary release date because they're not releasing a cartridge for that because it uses too much original information from the oh, original I game. See. Yeah, and yeah. they don't have permission to do that. Yeah. Uh, but Jamtex said in Discord, in the Discord channel, uh, need to do a few more tests, but it looks like we fixed all the small buggets in time, <laughs> in the timing for PitCat. Mm -hmm. Doing one more playthrough and some random checks tomorrow, but it will be officially released this week. So nice. any day now, the final binary version of PitCat will be released. Excellent. And as far as I know, they'll also be releasing the box and instructions. Mm through Atari age. Gotcha. So you'll be able to get the box and instructions, um, but the cartridge won't exist. It so. won't exist. Okay. Still, that's yeah. very cool. It is very, very cool. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been counting all the uh, releases 
that Al has been making, all the announcements and box arts that has been going, uh, that have been going up. Um, there's 11 of them. <laughs> 11 Atari 2600 games that are coming out in September now. We'll see. Um, so they are, tell me if I've missed any, um, Avalanche, Daredevil, Deep Stone Catacomb, Ninja Sky in Low Res World, wow. Pit Cat, Box and Manual only, wow. Panic Rooms, Robot City, The End, Tower of Rubble, Venture Reloaded, and Zookeeper. Wow. 11 of them. That's a lot of good games. <laughs> and I'm going to buy all of them. Because <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're all really good. Nice. Hey, Ricardo Pam, thank you so much for your subscription. Yeah. You're displacing Drexel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as the person on the screen nice. um and there's going to be four other games uh as well that have been announced by atari mm -hmm. age uh adventure 2 xe which we just showed uh dragon's cash for the 7800 uh magical fairy force which we played on the show yeah, for the 5200 cool. yeah, yeah. and one that's been in the works for a while that i found uh rebooted atari jaguar game compilation for the jaguar mm -hmm. atari jaguar um so a lot of games a lot of games and uh you can do the mental math with if you're uh, gonna buy them all now the 2600 <laughs> ones it averages from about 40 to 50 dollars with boxes okay and most of them are 45. okay so i think the cheaper ones that are like 4k boards mm. um are 40 with box okay. and the more expensive ones with like the more advanced boards that um that need cdfj uh, drivers and extra memory um, end up around the $50 mark with okay. the box. So yeah. it's a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so those who uh, are interested in getting them all, uh, get your wallets ready. Mm -hmm. um, so that's all the news. And John's hoping to have Robotron released this year. Yeah, he says at the end of this year. So the sash is coming off. <laughs> Sorry, time to play some games. Yeah, don't want to damage the sash. Nope. And there's a, if you didn't notice, there's a little Galaga pin at the bottom. Yeah. Hold that up. Yeah. There you go. A little Galaga, white Galaga pin to hold Galaga it all together. Pin. Yeah. Yeah. So the first game we're going to play is called tap a mm. And it was just uh, posted not too long ago in the Atari Age forums this is by Kohog. Mm. Um, so let's get that. Actually, we're not going to play that first. Uh, we're going to be mm -hmm. playing something else first. But we will be leading up to that. Did you want to adjust the camera? Uh, for what? Which okay. camera? Oh, I thought, I thought... I already did that. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah. sorry, I missed that. Um, so, uh, this is not the controller we're going to be playing with, actually. Okay. For the first <laughs> game. It's going to be this controller. Ooh. With this, which is the kid's controller. Oh, Fruit. And it was made for a bunch of Sesame Street games um, and other games Okay. Um, back in the 80s. And you can guess why it would be used for mole hunting. Whack, 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 whack. Exactly. Mm. So I think we They're will exciting. start the game for... No, we'll, we'll use... Can the, you go up and down or...? Uh, no, there's no up and down. Well, technically, you, you can use those buttons for anything, really. Like. Um, the first game we're going to be taking a look at is Holy Moly. No. This was going to be put out in... Oh, you mean in this menu? Yeah. No, they don't. I don't think they directly correspond. No, they don't. Yeah. Um, this is from 1983 by Bob Polero. We're just going to look at this for a little bit because it's not homebrew. Okay. Um, and it was never released. And it was released later as a prototype. Mm. Um, and so let's take a look at that. Got some music going. Nice. Um, so I think you have to do the reset on the machine mm -hmm. and then start whacking some moles. I have a copy of Holy Moly complete in box, as Ramirez says. Huh? Uh, Very nice. Start a pin just in time. Okay. Ready? Whack those moles. Get them. Get them. Oh, too late. Oh, ah. no. They're going. Oh, you got one. There you go. Too oh. slow. Oh, oh. 
don't know how to watch the screen and... Yeah, I don't think you can look at your controller. I think you have to just yeah. kind of memorize the buttons on the controller. Um, also, Mega Matrix made this game, um, adapted it for joystick. Oh. Um, for those who don't have the controller. Um, he actually also adapted a bunch of other games um, that use the controller as well. Alpha Beam with Ernie, Big Bird's Egg Catch, Cookie Monster Munch, and Holy Moly. Um, but we're, I thought we'd use the kids controller because I do have one. Um, whenever I went into uh, like the second hand stores and I didn't have a controller and they had it, I bought it. Oh, really? He's like, I don't have that for the Atari. I'm going to buy it. So I made sure I had like one of everything. Like if I didn't have the game, I would buy the game. If I didn't have a controller, I'd buy the controller. Mm. Um, so I was looking up what whack-a-mole, like the... You've, you've seen the game in, like, fairgrounds and yes, stuff? Yes, yeah. Slam it. Um, I thought it was older than it was. It was invented in 1975 um, by Kazu Yamada of Togo, based on... Togo. Uh, of Togo company, Togo. I don't know. Based on 10 of the designer's pencil sketches from 1974. And it was licensed to Bandai in 1977. It can be commonly found at Japanese festivals and everywhere else. A typical whack-a-mole machine consists of a large waist level cabinet with five holes in its top and large soft black mallet. Each hole contains a single plastic mole and the machinery necessary to move it up and down. Once the game starts, the moles will begin to pop up from the holes at random. The object of the game is to force the individual moles back into their holes by hitting them directly on the head with a mallet, thereby adding to the player's score. The more quickly this is done, the higher the final score will be. Oh, 550. Hmm. I just ordered a set of keyboard controllers. Uh, new old stock. Oh, wow. I never understood why it was so big compared to the button layout. This one? Oh, yeah. it's for kids. So they wanted Maybe to make so it, they can hold it big but... and chunky, big buttons. It's pretty big, though. And you would get overlays to put in here. Oh, it would snap in. So, so there it, might be information there. Yeah. And like, well, this doesn't reset, but no, it should it have like a reset. Well, probably don't want reset because it would reset the game. The game accidentally. Every, as, as you're playing it, yeah. yeah. You um, I assumed it was for smaller hands. Yeah. Yeah, it's got really nice grips on the back too. Yeah. I'll give it a try. Never actually played this game. It's it's because you have to look at the screen and like ah, figure out where well, your fingers should go. Yeah. Uh, you kind of have to figure out a hand positioning, and then it's not too bad. Yeah. Not too bad. No. They, they come up pretty your, slow. Just try and get They're most of fast. your fingers on the buttons and then just then have them one them. move yeah. over one. Yeah. They come up pretty slow at first, which is good. You want to warm up. It's almost like touch typing. It is, because you, your you home can't row. look at it. <laughs> yeah, you can't, yeah, you can't look at it. No, no, no. no. You cannot look at it. Because you will just... You will now make it. Oh, ooh. Bonus. Oh, you have to get every single one of them? Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. Bonus! 90 bonus. 390 minus 300. I guess you need to get oh. 300, and then you get bonus if you have... I think you have to hit them at the right a time. A minimum, yeah. And not when they're going away. Oh, there's like a minimum oh. roll count. Oh, I missed it. This music's pretty Ooh. incessant. Mm-hmm. And very short. Very fairgroundy. It's not bad. It's got nice graphics. Good, good graphics for the whole. Good information on the screen. Mm. At the oh, just oh no, oh no, I'm missing them. <laughs> As Ramirez, I haven't heard someone refer to the home row keys for quite some time. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely. That's it a definitely feels a like typing that. a typing term that you hear like once when you take typing in school. And no bonus. It feels like row. a typing game. It it, it does actually. Except. Yeah. Oh, oh, this is that's like the just bonus. just go nuts, go nuts, get as many as you can. Ah, ah. Oh, I, did I get them all? Yeah, that you got time? that one. I think I did. Oh. That's that's really cool. Oh, oh, I'm not supposed to get that. That's the radish. 
The radish? Yeah, you're not supposed to hit the radish. Oh, that's funny. He looks like a mole, but a he's mole. a radish. He's a mole mole. <laughs> Pretending to be a mole. It seems like it would be a lot more humane if he were to hit the radish and not the mole. <laughs> that's right. Just putting that out there. <laughs> Poor mole. Oh, no, that's not a radish. No, he's a he's a, a redder. He's mole. round, he doesn't have a he's face. Got a hat too. Oh, that... don't hit that guy. Oh. Ooh, big bonus. It works, the touchpad, it works with any of the, all th all three things are the same. Um, there's this one, and then there's the, oh my god, I hit the mm. radish. Uh -huh. Oh, I hit another radish. There's more radishes now. There's three types of these controllers, and they're all exactly the same. Are they? They're yeah. just different form factors. I'm trying to think of what, Ugh. Oh. hitting too many radishes. Game over. Oh, no. Game over. Aww. 1950. Very good. cute. That's it's a very, very cool cute. And very nice title screen. Very, very nice title screen. Okay, that's enough of that music. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Quahog, is that a radish? I thought the mole was mooning you. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. It could be. Uh, but in the in, ma in the manual, it says that it's... um. <laughs> it's actually a radish. <laughs> so I read the manual a little bit about this. Um, so now we're going to take a look at the actual game, um, Tapamol. So this is uh, Tapamol. He posted this on Sunday. Um, this is his first game he's ever made. Mm. It's a 4K game. Um, you can download it in the Atari Age forums. Nice. And Daryl Spice Jr. let me know about this game when it was posted. So thank you much, very much, Daryl. Um, and he'll be on the next show on Friday. So make sure you're there. For Daryl Spice Jr.'s nice. uh, developer spotlight on Friday, same time as today. Mm -hmm. um, so he says, hello, this is my first 2600 game project and my first time sharing any work on the forum. So apologies if I'm doing it wrong. He's in the chat right now. Oh, too. we've got the developer in the chat. Yay. Welcome, Quahog 2600. Yeah. Oh, he's the one who said his... <laughs> is it <nothing>. Mooney? <laughs> Excellent. Um, so he has upped the game mm. with this one and doubled up... The number of buttons. Oh no! <laughs> with the keyboard controller. Oh my! So, of those of you who have this keyboard controller, oh that's cool. They lock together. Kind of. Yeah. This is the original Switch <laughs> by Nin by Nintendo. So. Just when you thought they were watch being, out Nintendo, they were being original. Yeah. <laughs> They're actually just copying the Atari. Click. So yeah. somebody's coming out, coming coming for you, <laughs> Nintendo for infringing on keyboard controller copyrights. Yeah. Um, so this has the same layout. It yeah. has uh, three by four, hmm. and it functions exactly the same. Yeah, as yeah, yeah, this. yeah. Uh, same with the Star controller. Star, what is it? There's another controller as well. Hmm. Um, so this one uses both. So if you can hold that, okay. Ooh, plug the left seems into really the complicated. left. It has mm -hmm. a lot of buttons to press in this. Plug that into that one, and goodbye Atari box. <laughs> Plug that into port two. Excellent. Oh, it's fighting me. Is it? Yeah. I think it's port two. Nope. I have to unplug both of them. It's being difficult. Yep. Is tap them all. There we go. Oh wow, that is a lot. It's a lot of moles to tap. <laughs> a lot of moles. <laughs> Hopefully, it starts off slow. Okay, we've got it all plugged in. Tap them all on the screen. Here we go. Okay, this is a work in progress of my game, work in progress build of my game, Tapamole. It's whack-a-mole game that uses two keyboard controllers mapped to a six by four grid of holes. We've got six across and four down, not using the bottom row. Yes. No, you six? Uh, six across, one, two, three, yeah. four, five, and six. Yeah, and four down. And one, two, three. Oh, it's all of them. It's all of them. Wow, You okay. said, yeah, I was like, there's, they're, the, they're using the bottom row. Um, and then uh, he puts in quotes, oh, like holy moly, you might ask. Well, here's the funny thing. I've never heard of holy moly. 
<laughs> until I proudly shared my first build with a friend. And he nice. said, he said, oh, like holy moly. <laughs> uh, but I checked it out and our game looks and feels so different. I think it can ha happily coexist in the world. Although I will admit now I'm jealous of that name. It's pretty good. It name. is a pretty good name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, tap a mole is structured more like kaboom. I didn't want it to end. I didn't want to end that sentence in an exclamation point, but you know, the moles come in rounds. And when you finish off a batch, the next round of moles move faster and give you more points. If you miss a mole, it will steal one of your carrots, which you will see on the screen. They're very nice carrots at the bottom. Okay. Um, uh, then this will then lower you down a level, but that, but in that penalty round, you only have to get as half as many moles. Like in okay. Kaboom, when you miss one, you lose one of your platforms, but it goes slower. It starts slower. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Um, you get a carrot back every thousand points just like kaboom uh, lose all your carrots and the game's over mm -hmm. tap a mole is best played with the original basic programming style keyboard controllers locked together so you can touch type with your thumbs there's touch type again mm -hmm. it also i also tested with the kids controller and the star raiders pad that's what i was trying to think of and they both work it's hard to hold those two controllers at once with either of those that's why it's good these kind of connect together um Okay, well, let's just go for it. I think you just smack these moles. There's the carrots coming in. Very nice. So a little bit longer than whack-a-mole or um, holy moly, yeah. which is good because... Ugh. Get him. Oh, you missed one. One of your carrots it's is really gone. hard to ship back. I don't think you get... That's the end of the round? No. Oh, it is the end of the oh. round. Now they're coming. Oh, boy. Here ah! they come. Ah! Oh, oh, my goodness. That's too many. I'm trying to touch type, but it's it's not as easy as it seems. Mm, and then it goes slower. And now they're coming to pass. They even pop up faster. Um, and somebody in the forums... Uh, noted that he he sticks out his tongue when you when you miss when you hit him he goes ah. arena foot did the vcs die no it's going going fine everything is working um mr fix greetings to my favorite homebrew video game ah. author ah. try holding your thumb on the eights no, it's. I find that even harder oh. than using multiple fingers. Why are there? Oh, it's my beer. Yeah, there's Sorry. flies are loving. Oh, it's a very challenging. vinegary beer. It is. It's a raspberry sour, uh, which makes it almost taste like kombucha vinegar. almost. <laughs> um, or you can play it on Stella using your key, computer key, keyboard instead. Just remember to open up. Blah 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 blah. You can read that in the forums. Uh, if when you start up the game you get a hammer banging away somewhere in the bottom row that means you it doesn't think you have keyboard controllers attached anyway I'd love to hear what you think if you find any bugs of course especially if the game ever bounces up and down a scan line for you so far it's been rock steady uh, this was happening on some CRTs but not others it seems to have been fixed but you know how these things come back from the dead yeah I was looking at on Stella and it was a steady 262 lines ah. oh, oh your last carrot oh, so hard 225. I think I have somebody's score. I'm sure someone's done way better than that. Oh, but no. it's very fun. No, I don't have somebody's score. Nobody no, posted okay. It. It's 225. Pretty good. Are you going to go again? I think you have to reset. Yes. Yeah. I will try it one more time. Yeah. Okay. Well, fun. I'm going to start again. Sorry. Uh. It was on A on the right hand side. I think he actually. Um, has A B faster. settings. This feels faster. Really? Yeah, it's not easier. Oh, thank you, Arena Foot. Hello, Cafe Man 2D. Quahawk says, wow, over 200 on your first game. Good job. Hey, you're giving me lots of tips. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's an expert game player. I don't know about that. <laughs> You play a lot of games. How about uh, that? Yeah, that is true. Um, uh, there are a lot of things I could add to the game, but I'm trying to figure out what I should do before I call it complete. So your feedback there is really appreciated. I'd also love to hear your high score. My current is somewhere in the 4,000s. 
4,000? 4,000? Well, he oh didn't make God. the game. Oh, come on. But I, I've been playing I... a lot. You really have to touch type to get good scores. You can't be looking up down at your keyboard when it gets fast. Um, thanks to this Mike Mika, Ed, Ed Freeze, Tiki Dan for playtesting and making great suggestions. Thanks to everyone on ah, Thread ah, where I pilfered ah, I lost code. my movement. Ah, I hate it. Where I pilfered code they, for they, reading keyboard controllers. They, uh, my fingers. Oh, I have to almost look at it. Uh, I almost well, want to can't. look at it while you I'm can't. doing it. You have to find a good. He says the eight row is good. Yeah, but I don't always shift my fingers back properly. Do you know what I mean? Once you get panic, once you panic, it's all lost. It he is said. lost. Yes, yeah, true. I think I'm okay, but I'm not. I, I, I need to practice shifting back to the eight row. Thanks to Spiceware, Omega Matrix, St Stephen A, MK Smith, and Andrew Davey for being so patient with all my questions. And thank you to everyone who helps create Stella, Dasm, Player Pal, and the Atari H Forum, and all the great tools making this kind of thing possible. Hope you like Tap all. Um, and then when I announced that, that I was going to play it on the show, um, uh, Quag said, Zero Page Homebrew, oh my god, what an honor. I'm super excited and will be tuning in for sure, which he did. Yes, thank you. Uh, please, <laughs> please let me know if you have any trouble with the build. No, it's working perfect. Build is great, yeah. Hope you can dig up some keyboard controllers that snap together, which I did. Uh, Star Raid and key, Kids Controllers work, but not recommended. I can't imagine playing with anything but these. It would be incredibly hard. Oh, kicking ass, 379. <laughs> Last carrot. Oh, uh, oh and your last seven. question, Andrew Davey. If you hit a hole without a mole, I was thinking about subtracting points, but only if they have the A, B difficult set to A. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that'd be a great option. Like if you make mistakes, like on a harder version. You can have... Oh, you subtract I Subtract points if you hit yeah. the wrong hole, but that's on a harder. Yeah, but I like, I like how it functions where, okay, it starts over, then you have an easy round, then it goes back to the full round. As an it's option. A as an option. Yeah, no, but it, the play is pretty good yeah. that way. Gets you back into it. 387T. Is Rage Reset for appropriate for any VCS game made after 1983 or requires hitting the game reset rather than pressing a button to start a new game or is it reserved for game frustrations? Yeah. Just game frustra just frustration with your own self <laughs> for doing bad. Because yes. you're raging at your own self. That's okay. just annoying. Um, it would be nice not having to press reset because then you have to sit back down and get ready. Oh my god, what? I wasn't anywhere near where I was pressing. I know, it's about, it's about getting back to neutral, which yes. is more challenging the faster it, it becomes. Suddenly your finger's on the wrong button or you're not tracking yeah. where your finger was. So, well, the fruit flies are liking me today. They're liking your beer is what they like. <laughs> I'm liking my beer. I might have to get some more. <laughs> okay, I'll add button reset. Don't rage. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. No, you can't. What would the button be? I don't, I don't know. A combination of two? <laughs> like I don't know. Like both, both stars? Oh, oh my god. Oh, damn it. <sighs> yeah, they do shift a little. You almost want to tape them together, so if they shift, then you get a little off as well. Just got that. This is super cute. I really like the um, the moles, the little the little mole faces with their buck teeth. Yes, very cute. Almost beaver-like, actually. I feel like you're just smacking a whole bunch of stuff. Well, <laughs> I am, but um... <laughs> you're getting there. you go go get those go get those moles <laughs> wow you're killing it 
Did you play this at all? No. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh my god. There goes carrot. Oh. Oh, it gets fast. Ugh. Fingers are getting stuck. Yeah. 946! Ooh, that was good. That's James qualified for a patch. <laughs> if he breaks 4K, oh no, my wow. god. That would be that would be a patch. Almost got the bonus carrot? What? Ooh, at oh, a thousand? That's true. Oh, you get an extra carrot. That's true. Oh, are you gonna try for the bonus carrot? Uh, I'm gonna, uh, this it's is, quite frantic. This is rough on your hands. It is. <laughs> I want to take these together. Yes, well, yeah, that would definitely help. I have some tape upstairs. Yes, some masking tape. Actually, that's perfect timing because then I can get some beer at the same time. Yeah, they slip, so I would definitely recommend taping them together, together somehow. Uh, bonus carrot one. That's what helps you keep going. And when you start getting eight to ten points per mole, the score ramps up quick. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is this is the best use of the keyboard controllers I have ever seen. There's. It's really good, and the response is really nice from them. You could see I was getting quite quick with them. Um, uh, I want to wait till she gets that, but she's going to take a while. Uh, let me read a bit more. I think I've read everything about this. Um, I have zero suggestions on what to improve. Like, there is nothing. They look great. Um, the fence is awesome the carrots look awesome the response is amazing oh she's coming back excellent i don't have to stall anymore <laughs> oh masking tape excellent it's uh quite sticky that tape so i wouldn't That's use much. what i want oh it is very sticky yeah it is this should hold. i use it for art stuff which it's very good for because it is very sticky yeah this should definitely hold i would recommend doing this yeah <laughs> highly recommend Make sure you line up your keyboard controllers first. <laughs> there we go. You could sand the tops of the keys so they're less slippery too. <laughs> oh boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could wreck your controllers if yes. you wanted to. That would help. Yeah. Okay, you reset. I'll get ready. Uh, reset? Yes. That is, that's the biggest problem. It's the game reset button, right? Yep. Okay. Because... You have to, um, it's almost slow at this level. Well, I was, it was getting pretty fast. It does feel very kaboom light in its, its ramping up of speed. Like, well, yeah, it does. You can't prepare like kaboom. There's no patterns like kaboom. So you just have to like well there kind of is a pattern actually mm. because you can lag behind a little bit a touch and you have you to can. and you, you have can. to remember the pattern it's like that one came first so i have to hit that one first yeah you don't have to hit them in order but you no. have to hit them before they go down it's best to hit them in oh order. i i agree with you oh no did i miss one? Oh no no you just came really close atari you wanna Come. yeah good cat good kitty uh. good kitty where's your brother Where's your brother? <sighs> oh, God. Yeah, you do sometimes save yourself. Oh. oh. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. brother's around. Should we bug your brother? And James is whacking his moles. Is that a euphemism? <laughs> Damn it.
grumpy about that. That describes him pretty well. Goodness, look at you go. Damn it. 1439. Damn it. You shouldn't whack your mole on Twitch now. I'm no, you, you'll be suspended pretty quick. No moles were harmed in the making of this game. <laughs> Someone said, Is this game Peter approved? No, no. And then Quahog says, yes, because you don't eat the moss. <laughs> oh. Oh, Pixel, come back. Come back, Fluffy Cat. 1808. <laughs> Very good. That was really good. Me? <laughs> yep, one more. How, can we get an 1808? How does the scoring system work? A multiple of the level? Uh, makes sense. No, oh, thank you sense. very much, uh, Quahog. <laughs> Send James a patch. <laughs> I don't think there's... I, I think... The... <laughs> A patch would be super cute for this game. <laughs> yes. A little mole out of a, a little hole. Dizzy mole. Uh, dizzy mole. Yes. Spin, spinning <laughs> yes. stars on his head. Oh my god, that'd be so cute. It's uh, good stuff. Uh, like a boom, you get points equals level. Oh, you get one point every level. Let's see. I already messed. Oh, up. it is there one point every level. I don't know what level I was on, but I was it was getting it was going up quite quickly. I was getting like hundreds per level. You heard it here first, folks. Rage Reset Edition, quad tar with four keyboard controllers. <laughs> Double the moles. Um the quad tar only accepts joysticks, unfortunately. Um it's it's not a automatic doubler of anything. It doesn't work with um uh, paddles or driving controllers it's only joysticks and that's the way it that's that's why it can double them ah! because joysticks only have oh, Lord. literally <laughs> four directions and a button um, so it's like these have 12 different buttons and that's not even making up all the things that they can do um, anyway so no eight paddle games no no it's just joysticks unfortunately Hey, Jared Gray West. Welcome to the stream. Oh. 236. Ah, what's Nowhere going near. on? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> you, you need the reset. Ah! Uh, <laughs> my fingers get welcome all... Welcome to Mole Night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're playing three mole games. We're on number two. <laughs> The, oh. the funny ah. the funny thing is, ah, is okay, <laughs> I gotta tell you something. I had the oh, game The Truth Comes Out Now. Yes. Whack a mole scheduled for today. Did you? About a about a <laughs> about a week ago. This was before this game was announced. I had a mole game already scheduled for That's tonight. That's pretty funny. And I then this so game many. came out. <laughs> This game came out. I did not know it was going to come out. I tap a mole. I had no clue he was making this game. Um, and so, I so we it, it just coincidental that two mole games are being played. And then somebody suggested, "Hey, there's another mole game." And so, so it turned out three mole games were gonna are being played tonight. And it's just crazy. Five. Wow, doing really awesome. No, I'm not. <laughs> Gonna make it to the extra extra carrot. Uh, uh, uh. When Darcy and I were uh, teenagers, yeah, we uh, tried to make a mole trap. Okay. Because my parents' lawn had a bunch of mole hills, right? Okay. We we're like, oh, we gotta build a trap to trap these moles. Yeah. And we tried everything; nothing worked. Okay. But uh, yeah, just a little side story there. <laughs> And, and if it would worked, we would have made up a company and sold them. 
but we're trying prototypes. Yeah, and you're trying different... to engineer the the ultimate mole catcher. Is that yeah. the idea without injuring the mole? Um, or were you yeah, not no. so concerned about that at that point? In time? No, we didn't. We didn't. Oh no, we were gonna poison them all. Oh no! At that point, it was oh. bad. Yeah, mine was bloody, bloody, <laughs> bloody mole. <laughs> oh, his trap was bloody. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Drexel no. and I were making mole traps as yeah. teenagers. James uh, used juicy fruit to slowly murder the moles. That's right. Oh, his his version was a bloody one. Mine was slowly murdering. Slowly murdering. A slow death. Ah, it's far worse. Because we heard that... Just whack juice, him with a mallet. We That's heard they like juicy fruit, and it also killed them when they <laughs> ate it. What? But, that sounds like something a teenager would believe. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was a lie. They never ate the juicy fruit. <laughs> Ever, ever, ever. Well, if you didn't try, you would never know. Yeah. Our mole traps never work. <laughs> uh, my thumbs are really mm. sore from this game, so mm. I mm. cannot play again. Oh, it has it high score. Hard. Yeah, yeah. This my is, score, your high score, yeah. This is an incredible build right, yes. out the, right out of the gate. It's really it's really nice and simple and a lot of fun and frantic. And Kaboom's a bit like that, too. It's very frantic, and games like that are a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah, I like um, that. I have no suggestions. This is, it's absolutely perfect. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's a great I game. I can't think of any, yeah, anything nice. to improve this game. The graphics are great. The sound is great. I don't great. think I've ever Conf used the keyboard controllers before either, which is, and it's a really unique way to do it because you've got all yeah. those buttons. So you take advantage of all of them. So yeah, yeah it's like great. Six, 24 buttons. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Crazy number of inputs for yeah. a game is 24 different buttons yeah, to press. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's the best use of the keyboard control I've ever seen. Um, mm. and it, I don't know, the game ramps up really nicely. Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't get too fast, too quick. Um, cause I was playing for what, 10 minutes, something mm. like that. Yeah. It gives you a good run. And he, and, uh, Quahog said he ran to, he made it up to 4,000. So if you get really that's, good. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's dedication. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I could probably do a little bit better if I practiced a bit more, maybe up to three mm. uh, in a couple more games. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Oh yeah. Yeah. New game button. Just make it a both stars or one star, like something like, but make sure you put a pause before starting a game. So you can pause it. Yeah. Because you're pressing buttons, you're pressing buttons. You don't want to start a game instantly. You yeah. want to put like a two second delay. So they yeah. stop pressing the buttons. Then make Would a it... double button work with the Atari take that? You just need one button. You just yeah. press any button to But the nice again. thing about the double button means that. There's no accidents. There's no accidents. Yeah. Well, but I don't think that's likely. necessary. No. Just one star to start it again. Yeah. Or the one, because usually your fingers are on the eights. So you put the yeah. furthest away. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's cool. I mean, you could get it complicated with two players or whatever. Um, you could have a two-player version where you're on each side and you're battling out a high score. I'm just. I, speaking I, of that, we're going to do that right now. We didn't even think about that. But oh, we played the left, so now play the right. It has, like automatic two, has automatic. Has automatic two-player. That's right. Ready? And it's cooperative, which you it don't is. Get very it is cooperative. Often. very smart it yep. is auto yeah auto two player well i did not even think of that he said <laughs> oh i we didn't think of that until it's just now selling it like, point it's a selling point for yeah. sure <laughs> two player one player you'd have two kids playing it yeah actually that's really good for two kids because it's yep. quite complex to play but with two kids with one with each controller that's actually a really good way of doing it and they can ramp up until like you know they get good with one controller they yeah. can practice with one and then get better yeah. when it's two. I did that whole round almost. Yeah. <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> so I'm playing the right hand side and Tanya's playing the ah. left hand side. How come Oh, happened. yeah, this is not going to work, unfortunately. What do you mean? Uh, because unless there's something programming issues, um, there's oh, going to be conflicts. Oh, we both hit it at the same time? Yeah, there seems to be conflicts. Like, I, I was just pressing a button and it wasn't oh. working. Yeah, but, well, yeah. Which doesn't make a lot of sense. It's t 
do with you pressing at the same time I am, I think. That's the issue. Yeah, that's why I was gonna say. Yeah. But, but, but when you play it with two finger, like, with two hands, you would have the same potential issue. Mm, yes, as, you would, because your but, thumbs can hit them at the same time. But you don't do that. As a single, as a person playing by yourself, you'd never hit two at the same that's, time. It's less likely. It's oh, really I couldn't get unlikely. It, I couldn't get that to work at all. Interesting. It's because I was pressing things. Yeah. You were purposely trying to mess me up. So this doesn't work. <laughs> I, I tried to hit that well, guy. It's, it's... It doesn't work because you're pressing something. does reasonably work. It does. You just have to be very insistent. Like, I could jam you out. And... Yeah, see, I, I hit that. Yeah. For sure. Like, I did that on purpose, too. Because you can see the uh, mallet, right? Yes. You can see the mallet's not swinging. Only one mallet at a time. You, you'd you have to change the programming so that there could be two mallets or something. But, but you don't necessarily need to. Like, yeah. Uh, you don't need to, but if this was something that you wanted to add in, yeah. Um, yeah, so this doesn't work. Yeah, only one hammer. Yeah. yeah, still pretty cool. Yep, very, very cool. Very, very cool. I can't wait to see what this does to the score. Not Well, it actually we made it to 11. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, I don't think it was too bad. No, it still works. I think it if you're a kid, two works kids, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it works well enough. Excellent. Very fun. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. <laughs> Send the both a patch. Patches for everyone. Patches. <laughs> 1117 co op. <laughs> fun, 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 fun game. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you for pointing out that undocumented game mode. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, so you'd have to, what he could do is queue it up mm -hmm. almost. Like you'd have to go, okay. The left one push this, then the right one. Like, I'll cue that hammer up for next oh. push. But then it would just get behind, more yeah, and more behind. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Especially if you're mashing. If you're mashing buttons, yeah. the inputs, you'd be mashing them. So, yeah. yeah. It, that would be, yeah, it's challenging. I don't know how it, you'd it, solve that. But. It works, but as you get faster, it becomes more of an issue. Yeah. Because you're hitting it more often. So, yeah. But still very, it's kind of neat. Yeah. It is... I could let all hammers preempt all other hammers. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Yep, that might work. It's like, oh, somebody pressed another one. Cancel that hammer. Cancel the previous one. Or yeah. Finish the killing of that mole. Go to the next one immediately. Yeah. Preempt, but also follow through. Yeah. Like just remove the hammer. It hit the mole. Yeah. Go to the next mole. Yeah, 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 yeah. That will solve it. Yes, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> A teddy bear version. Yeah, this this might be actually really hard for kids, this level. This, if you wanted to make it for yeah. kids, and it would be more inclined. A step kind of, down, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a step down. And you could do that with the game reset with different, like, level one, like level a, a two. two difficulty settings kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Or with the AB switches. Or the AB, yeah, yeah. Which I find is more elegant. It's, it's, uh, yeah. Yep. It's pretty cool. It's very I really cool. like it. It's a lot of fun. It's a really good game. Now we're going to go to our third mole game. Yes. Why not get all the mole games out of the way in one show? Get all the moles. See, now you said that someone's going to find another mole game for you. Oh, no. Is this in the right thing? Mm -hmm. Is it? Is it plugged in? Make sure it's uh, plugged in. It just had to be reset. Um, so the third one is Whack-A-Mole. Okay. There you go. Okay. Oh my. So this one is from 2009, so it's a little bit older. Um, oh. It's by After Mac, okay. May 26, 2009. He started making it, and this builds from May 30th. It's a 2K game. It's very small. Hmm. Um, the last one was a 4K. That last game is that's really good for 4K. The graphics, oh, and the sound, yeah. and the yeah. the gameplay really, yeah. really good. Mm -hmm. Very old school yeah. type of game. No one can see the screen yet, so. Oh, you don't need to see the screen. Actually, we didn't start playing, so it's okay. Yeah. There you go. Um, yeah, so this is joystick controlled, center for center, mm. you know. So, whack those moles. What? How do I How do I whack the moles? Up, down, left, right. No? Not working? What am I highlighting? Is it falling out? I don't know, maybe. Does this use a different controller? Okay. 
I thought this used joystick. Yeah, there's no indication that you're actually hitting them. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I finally got around to writing a game in Batari Basic, and since Whack-A-Mole is a playable, keep score, and has an end, technically qualifies as a game. Um, to start the game, press reset. To Whack-A-Mole, move your joystick in the direction of the mole and press fire. Your score will increment. After 100 moles, the game will end, and you can press reset to play again. So there is a top score in this. Uh, missing a mole will cause the next mole to appear and increment the counter, so misses will count against you. This game might be better suited for the keyboard controller. That's funny. But joysticks are easier at this point. I've only tested this in Stella, so I'm not sure if it would do well on another emulator or real hardware. You're halfway there. I just started working on it last night, and it's most likely not a finished product, but I thought I would put it up now that it's playable. I know the game is pretty cheesy. Go easy on it, but any feedback is appreciated. <laughs> So, and this was in 2009. Yeah, so it's a bit older. Uh, for every 10 moles you hit in a row, a slight speed increase, an extra 10 chances, and the background color changes. So you're up to 70. All you have to get is 100. I've also animated the mole. You get three points for hitting the mole on the way up, only one for hitting it on the way down. The quicker you hit, the more points you get. At this point, I don't think I'm going to add a second mole. I'm pretty happy with how the game has come along. I don't see... It's just one by one. I don't see any change in, in scoring, depending on if he's coming up. No, he didn't implement that, it looks like. It's just strictly... Uh, very simple game. There was a prototype whack-a-mole done by Bob Polero called Holy Moly. There was a small repro run done for CG or some other... Oh, it's over 100. Up. Oh, so he changed that. Yeah, we played, uh, we played Holy Moly at the top of the show. Ground Trooper. I would settle for the mole to change color when hit. Yeah. Yeah, something simple like that is. No hammer. Yeah. The the score is the only indication of hitting. Yeah. Um, I think this was this was this person's first game, first and only ever game. Well, so, that's it's so they good were, for them. It's it it's functional. It is. It works. You can play. I don't think it's score. scoring. He completed, or maybe we just have an old version of it or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Uh, Impaler twenty six got the high score with two seventy three. But it doesn't seem to be getting any faster, so... I don't... It doesn't seem faster. Um, I slowed it down quite That's a it. bit. Oh, he died. Okay, you oh. must have missed enough of them. Yeah. yeah. Cool. There you go. Cool. Thought I'd throw it's it in because it's a mole game. game. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Pretty simple uh, game. The next game is called Atomic Meltdown. You can queue it up, mm. please. Meltdown. It's by Grant Thieneman. Mm. Dis Jokifa. Quite a name. <laughs> um, this was released in 2010. First posted in 2009. It's a 16K F6 supercharger game. Mm. Um, he also made, it, made or attempted to make Atomic Meltdown 2. That's the only games he's ever made. Okay. And you can download this in the forums. This is a one player or two player game, but we'll start off with one player. Okay. I think you can press a button. Um, different options, up, down, left, right. No, he has a mix of the button, two two player co op, two player versus, or one, one player. player. So press the button. There you go. Don't touch the sides. Avoid the things being shot at you. What That's about doing? it. You're the middle dude. Oh. So don't touch the sides and don't get shot by the thing. There you go. And it kind of jitters around. The story is a nuclear reactor. Core stabilizer and containment field has failed unexpectedly, and you, the technician, have to manually stabilize the atomic matter until the containment field can be initialized. The containment walls will start enclosing around the atomic matter as the containment field is back, brought back online. However, because the containment field is down, other random atomic matter is being projected around the reactor core. The manual stabilizers have not been calibrated on schedule, so they do not stabilize the atomic matter correctly, which has resulted in the atomic matter to jitter around. Oh, got me. Boom! Ha 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 ha! Nice. Explosion. Game over. All right. Oh, you can't start it. Yeah. Um, if two pieces of atomic matter collide, or if the atomic matter collides with the walls before the containment field has been initialized, then the whole nuclear reactor what will explode. It says wild. 
I'm going to be changing and modifying stuff, but I feel that the core oh. of the game is pretty solid. I was listening to you. <laughs> um, if you switch it to difficult A, then the game gets harder. However, I've not really tested it out yet, so no promises. Um, if you're on the title screen, you hit fire button to get the game selection. Um, at the game selection screen, you hit the game select button to scroll through the different game modes and fire um, soon to be reset to select a mode you want to play. Again, noting that only single player mode is is hit at the moment. This will change tomorrow. If you put the left difficulty A instead of B, good luck. The jitter happens more often and other atomic matter is shot at you more. Mm. It takes longer to complete the game. Oh. This, this is version one. Version two only has one player. And it's not really... It, it only changes the graphic, really. Oh, yeah. On version two. Mm. He didn't do much on version two, so... I'll watch you play one more one oh. more game, and then we'll play two player. A mole from Mole Hill to Chernobyl. What a segue! <laughs> the moles have mutated. Yeah. Because the nuclear reactor has gone the moles, off. The moles are now in charge of the nuclear reactors. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I like the idea that should be a game. Ver they this should be a game variation for the previous Holy Moly game. Yeah. I was thinking about a competitive version of Tap a Mole with two keypads. It could be. With just one set of holes on the screen and two hammers. Scores who taps first. Ooh. Mm. That's a good variation. Yeah, so so the person who gets the point is the one who gets there first. Different hammer colors. Right? One could be red, one could be blue. Well, it's two sides of the screen, right? Uh I think Wouldn't he's you be comp competing against each other. So if your top left one goes, the first no. one to hit it gets the point? Is Flack, that what you mean? I think Flack Hits is talking about one column. Oh, I see, I see. And both people are competing. But sometimes oh. there's two moles on the screen, so you could be going for different ones. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Yeah, who gets there first? Yeah. Yeah? Who gets there first and who gets the most? Mm. That would be very interesting. Uh, more mole games! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need. At least three mole games a year. Three mole games a year. <laughs> <laughs> they'll have to be just straight up whack-a-mole games with different types of variation. <laughs> well, I'm doing better this time. Yeah. Not sure if the beer is helping or hurting at this point, but... There's a fine line with mm -hmm. beer, right? <laughs> Enough to make you relaxed. Yeah. Not oh, oh, see, when I listen to you, I'm not paying as good attention, so... What can you do? You want to go? 101. 101 we're going to play together. Oh. So, go to the screen. Co-op or versus? We'll do versus. What's versus? Do I shoot things at you? Press the button. Oh. I'm green on yes. the right. Yes. Tanya is red on the left. Gotcha. This is going to be very hard. Oh, I think they only it's show up. It's really jittery. Shoot from the top or bottom because otherwise. Yeah. If they shot from the right for me, I'd be dead instantly. I wouldn't be able to avoid it. No. Oh, they are shooting from the right. i got to stay to the left then as much as I can. Or maybe from the right too. Oh my goodness. It's so jittery. Damn it. Yeah. Player one <laughs> wins. Oh, Jared Gray West found another mole game. <laughs> I told you, you ask, people will find them. A prototype mole game. Mark mole. Mm. There's no mole themed paddle games yet. <laughs> okay, press button. Button again. Two player. Oh, you have to switch it. Uh, <laughs> one or the other, people. We'll do this one once more and then right. we'll play the co op one. Oh, that was really, really Five quick. Five points. Death. I bounced okay. back and then, yeah. Press button. A mole too far. Not that many times. Sorry. Oh, you have to die. I'll die. Go die. There we go. Button. Okay, go on. Go up. Okay. Oh. So I don't. Oh. Oh, we can't hit each other. Oh, well, well, that's how you figure that, that out. How that co-op? <laughs> okay. Press don't button. touch each other. <laughs> Okay, stay on your side. You stay on your side. You stay on your side. Uh, we need tape across the room. <laughs> Get over. You're too close to the middle. No. Why are you do going so close I'm, to the middle? I'm not. A, he's bumping around. Look <laughs> at you. You're getting over to my side. 
Ah, ah you the hit top. the wall. To mole or not to mole? <laughs> I'm all too far. I want to look up that game though. I'll scroll back. Okay, again. Hmm. One more of this, then I'm going to play a single player. I like the jitteriness. I do because it it it's, it, it's a little bit it's crazy and unpredictable. Yeah. So you're not quite in charge. Not many games have that kind of jitteriness to them. I swear I've played another I like one. It. I like it. Yeah. Where it's jittery like this, but I can't remember what it what it was. I mean, you can't make too many games that have jitter because they'll just frustrate the player. But this is... This, this is, is a subtle amount of jitter. Yeah. Oh, he fell into it. I'm sorry. He jittered <laughs> into it. I thought I was far enough away. Okay. That's cool. I like that. That's fun. You going to play single player? Or? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I can just do it. There yeah. you go. That's, that's, at least that option's nice. It, it resets to player one. Yeah. So I'm guessing... In the end, you just die because it just gets smaller and smaller. Mm. You just try and get as high a score as possible. I thought it said that the game does end, but... Oh. I don't know. No download of Mark of the Mole. Oh, so you can't. Oh. Just somebody knows about it. This mole unit, this might be considered a mole game. <laughs> mole unit? <laughs> mole yeah. driver. Mole driver. <laughs> People are looking up all the mole games. You are Townces, the mole driver, and you must drive over your mole brethren as they emerge from the underground before they pop into the mole mobiles and attempt to crash into you. Townces or Love Tounces? Love it. Tounces. Tounces. Tounces is a driving mole. A driving cat, yeah. yeah. Love it. So I did cover all the mole <laughs> games then. I think you, yeah. Actually, if you stay low, oh, that's dangerous. But I was saying if you if I was thinking if you stay low and it gets fired across the screen, you have more room to move. But if you stay low, something from coming from below is gonna. Oh, Splendid Night is making a physics chemistry joke. Oh boy. Avogadro's number talking about a mole. Oh, mole jokes. Wrong type of mole. <laughs> <laughs> Geek jokes. Oh, that was geeky. If you thought my sash was bad. Programmer didn't take into account the vertical speed difference. That is, it's faster than the horizontal. Mm. <gasps> Damn it! <laughs> didn't you get 101? Or is that a different game? I think I got 101, yeah. Or did you? Well, I, I just did. You, you, you played for quite a while. I think it was about the same, yeah. Yeah. Do one more. It's it's Raiders it's, of the Lost Mole, Mole's Revenge. Jesus. This is getting to be a lot of fun now. That, it's getting out of hand. <laughs> just 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 change change the main character to a mole. Yeah. It's a bit of jumpiness here and there. Mole madness. Hmm? Mole madness. Roll a, roll your mole down a. <laughs> Instead of marble madness. Yeah. That's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> took took me a bit to figure out what you're talking about. <laughs> A rolly mole. A rolly mole. <laughs> Maybe a dermatology game would work too. Oh, you guys are you guys are hilarious, oh. Jay. <laughs> moly, moly, moly. <laughs> oh. Terrible. Terrible puns. Terrible mm -hmm. jokes. So I have to beat one oh one. Get the high score. One's from the top and the bottom that are tough. So you have no time to avoid them because they go quite a bit faster than the ones going across the screen. Oh yeah, they do. Because there's less real estate because this because the play field's wider on this game than it is uh, from top to bottom. Hmm. Even though the resolution is lower left to right, it's 160. But there's score on the screen. Yeah, I beat it. I think. Oh, it's getting tight now. Not much room to move. Oh, I didn't even see that one. It's because it's the same color. 
they're using the ball so it's the same color as the play field mm -hmm. so you don't see it till it's right on you net when it gets close oh my goodness oh my goodness avogadro's number is also a brain a brain a bar a bar <laughs> <In> Fort Collins. <laughs> nice. that's a good name for a bar I guess. yeah i like that 18 -8. Okay, we're on to the fourth game. Real sports mole Olympics. Mole remover extreme. Oh, it's too much fun. <laughs> mole Fortnite. Yeah. Honey, are you whacking moles again? <laughs> mole <laughs> Fortnite. <laughs> so the fourth game we're going to be playing is... Doesn't involve moles. Not a mole game. <laughs> it's Cave Ropes by Jonathan Bont, and a man. All right. This was uh, made in 2009. It's a 4K game. Mm. Other games they made. This actually has some sounds. And a very, school, a very cool scrolly um, intro title there. Oh, change the graphic. Change the graphic. There you go. Cave ropes. I spend a lot of time on those. Okay. Um, he made Catch a Coin, Cave Ropes, Endless Road, Highway Madness, Monaco, GP2600, Rally X, Tower Zone, Trash Mania, and Trash Mania Remix, which we played recently, mm. which alerted me to this game. Mm. You can download this in the Atari H forums, just like all the games we played. Um, after, have, after having to kill off Tower Zone, I decided to work on something new. And despite high school being a major time killer, I was still able to shell out some free time, and in that spare time, I put together this. Cave Ropes. The goal is simple. Catch all the diamonds or game over. Hold left to right to go through three different ropes. It makes sense when you try it. Fire button pushes diamond up. Don't know what that means. Down pulls diamond down. Oh. Without further ado, <laughs> screenshots and binary. Okay. Oh, mole bowling. Reminiscent of Alice in Wonderland's Hedgehog Croquet. Oh. I don't think mole ski tuning would work. Oh. oh. <laughs> Moves too fast. Okay. Go for it. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, old person. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> oh, this man. This is going to be painful. Oh, okay. my goodness. Okay, well, you're going to have to just sit by the front there. I think so. You have to catch all the diamonds. It's really fast. Yeah, that was one of the complaints of the people in the forums. It's like, it's instantly too fast. Instant death. Oh, I, I can't even... You have to hold left. Oh, my goodness. This is really hard. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, oh it's super hard. You got two of them. Three. Yay, you get the hang of it. This actually gets a little bit easier. Oh, oh no, it doesn't. It's really <laughs> hard because it doesn't stay where you leave it. Oh, you have to push it back. <laughs> oh. oh gosh. Yeah, no, this is frustrating. This needs this needs a button reset. Yes. Rage reset. Exactly. But, Thank you, Carl G. But try. They said down and button. Do they do things in the game? They speed up or slow down. Well, I'll definitely slow down then. That wouldn't be very. Oh, it slows down it, the one. Yeah, that's on. what I said. It pushes it up. That's no good. That doesn't help you at all. Yes, it does. You want to push it away. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one you could do. Yeah, but you want to pull it down. Ugh. Oh, pull it down, yeah. I think this starts way oh, too hard. Oh, it's so hard. It starts way too hard. Oh, I... I <laughs> You'll probably do better at this than I than I am, because my... The developer needs to slow down the title screen. It's <sighs> hard to read at that speed. Cave ropes. Okay, one more time. I'll let you try it. It's... Okay. Oh, it's super hard. Ugh. It's super sensitive. I'll sit down there. Okay. This is when you need Pixel to jump in and smash Start that reset. reset. Or pull it down so you can get it sooner, yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, you do have to delay that one. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh my it's, god. It's really hard. Then three come at once? Yeah, it's really hard. Okay. I don't like having to hold it. It screws me up an awful lot. Ah! You almost want to pull it down faster, but I haven't gotten into the habit of doing it. Oh, that yeah, let me try to pull it down this time. Yeah. Oh no, that's too hard. Shoot it again? Because you have to be like diagonals. I think the pulling down, you have to get the hang of it. Oh my god. This starts way too hard. Okay. You have like no practice time. Yeah, when you have two, it's like. But you're, I'm dealing with the middle one. Yeah. I don't have time to go. <laughs> I guess I have to pull down the middle one, then go and pull down the other one. Okay, go. This is nightmarish. Oh my god. <laughs> it needs music. Okay. Ready? One yep. more? Yep. I think once you get your brain around the controls, it's a little bit easier, but it's it's it starts off really hard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're getting it. Oh. Oh, yeah, okay. It starts off too hard. Okay. One more? Yep. This could have been a really good game. Oh, but it's too crazy at first. You don't have time to practice. It should be like one. Yeah, one two, at a time. Three, and then it should start much slower. Are you ready? Yep. Is there difficulty settings? No, it's nothing. <laughs> should I try it? No. No, there's nothing. This is the only version he ever released. Oh, pretty good. Oh. Okay. So there's no score either. There is. Is there? But it disappears as soon as you die. Oh, so you can see it? Well, yeah. You so see that was another thought. complaint of the pers people in the forums. Yeah. You don't get get to see your score because 17. it's like gone Yeah. instantly. Needs sub pixel movement so it can start out easier. Yeah, it needs to start out a little slower. Oh, yeah, he may be doing it like just as fast as he can. Uh, one more. One, one more? One more, yeah. Needs more than one life? Uh, uh, I'm okay with the one no. life concept. You just It just needs to start a little bit slower. There's something about this that feels oh. very Guitar Hero esque. It is, and it'd be amazing <laughs> as Guitar Hero, like left, yeah. right, center. Yeah. And it's just too hard it at first. It just starts too fast, yeah. Oh, Here somebody needs to be continue making this game. The yeah. Guy... Super Guitar Hero, yeah. Yeah. It's you really, really good. Another? You're good. Yeah. You're good? Somebody needs to make Guitar Hero with these. Like, like, look. Look how, look at this. Oh, yeah. You could play it. Yeah, you could. This is the perfect input Didn't we device. play one where it was colors... Going up and down the screen, coming across. Do you remember that one? There's one other game we played with these, and it was like a laser thing, and it was so. But what was the game? Didn't we play? It was with the paddle, with music. It was really good, and you're yeah. hitting the colors yeah. to do something similar with that. Yep. Yep. It was really cool. Definitely. I I cannot remember the name of the game, but. Uh... Pulling the rope needs to speed it to the bottom. Yes, like right down, boom. Yeah. Like, like boom instantly. Drop, drop, drop. That would work like faster. Faster. <laughs> Release version of the game comes with a Tanya to press reset Sounds for Sounds like she's yeah. talking about uh, <laughs> lead. Is it lead or lead? I've forgotten now lead, again. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. Flop band 26. No, that wasn't it. But uh, I yeah, can't remember. I really enjoyed playing that game, though, yeah. with the colors. And it was music, music based. Release the version of the game comes with a Tanya to press the reset for boxed in with yeah. the game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, it comes bing, with a Tanya. <laughs> yeah. And a cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know much more we can play that game because it's really fast and really frustrating. Boo. <laughs> but it, the concept is brilliant. No, the concept's I there. I love it. It just starts. Oh, it'd be so it good. It starts too fast. Like, it there starts could be too fast. Bonuses and power ups and oh, yeah. a whole bunch of fun things. Yeah. It's just a little too. It, it starts Th a little too throws fast. Throws you in. Yeah. Like that would be like level four or something. Yeah. What, what you're seeing there. Yeah, level yeah. three. It should be like one. Yeah. One. 
one two <laughs> um so some of the suggestions said not bad one of the issues the score disappears immediately on yeah, death so i have I no idea what our scores are yeah uh, some other things. Currently, it's too fast from the start. Maybe mm. slowing it down or just one diamond at a time. Mm. I think the control should be changed a little. Instead, of, depending on the joystick position, the player could jump from rope to rope. I don't. I like that re automatic centering. Oh, I don't like it, but it's because I'm not used to it. Yeah, I like it. It's like you either left or left. Let it go. Yeah. Right. Let it go. It automatically yeah, I... just. So you don't have to go left, right, right, like left, you, left. You adapted to it pretty quick. It took my brain. What's wrong? It's hitting this and going, oh. slightly making noise. Um, <laughs> you, yeah, I, I just get, I think you just get used to that. But I, it was frustrating to start with. I'm like, what's going on? Why is it not? It kept bouncing back. <laughs> it said, if possible, make the player square a Panama Joe, Indiana Jones type sprite instead of just a square. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe instead of controlling the rate at which the diamonds fall, control the player climbing up and down the ropes. Mm, that's something. I don't mm. know about that. Diamonds worth 10 to 100 points each. Climbing up is worth one point per step. Sliding down the ropes, trying to catch diamonds, deducts one point or so per step. Mm. So like a Donkey Kong Jr. Going type up thing. Down. You go up, and then you can slide down and get it. That would be really interesting. Like if you had the character on the screen jumping between the ropes. Too. Yeah, jump, jump. Then you can climb yeah. up and get them if you yeah. want to get them fast. But it, Rather than pulling them down. Yeah. That totally changes the game, though. I, I think it's fine in its simplicity. I don't think you need that. But I just think it needs a slower ramp up. And then you can add power-ups into it, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, I find the lack of moles disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, Captain Classic is explaining sub-pixel movement. Yeah. Because right now, most a lot of games or people... Uh, developers when they start out they don't know about sub pixel movement so they can only move one at a time mm -hmm. and since there's 60 frames a second everything moves at 60 pixels per second mm -hmm. at the lowest speed and then it doubles instantly because it has to do two pixels a second but you maybe want to do one and a quarter pixels a second so you have to keep track of positions a little bit differently um, and the last one, in addition to caching diamonds, you could also have en enemies on the ropes that you have to avoid. That's a good suggestion. I mean, it's hard to even imagine doing that at this speed, but if you start off slow, be like, okay, yeah, avoid that enemy, catch the diamonds. Yeah. Why didn't this person keep going? Oh, this could have been <laughs> such a good game. Like, the basics are so good. Well, I think, I think he, they deserve credit for... Yeah. coming up with a good concept i think it yeah. just they didn't they didn't roll with it they didn't they didn't kind of expand more but it's a very yeah. cool game yeah. yeah okay we're gonna now switch over to the 7800 <laughs> which we're not actually switching over to a 7800 because there's no multi-cart <laughs> readily available for a 7800 unfortunately um i wish there was and then we could play on a 7800 but that's not happening until the what is it concerto comes out okay but in the meantime we're going to be playing through the browser which is actually a really really good um really good browser emulator i'm really surprised at it yeah um how good this is a browser emulator wow. yeah it's a 7800 browser emulator if you have okay. not checked it out and you want to play 7800 games really easily um, go to JS7800, JS7800, JavaScript 7800. It is awesome. It even works with uh, USB controllers. So you don't have to use a keyboard. It just automatically maps. So we're going to be playing Night Guy in Low Res World. Oh, everybody's staring at a blue screen. Sorry about that. Um, there we go. Oh. We don't want to see the bottom of the screen. One second. Let me get rid of the bottom there. Mole guy in low res world. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. The moles are not stopping. <laughs> <laughs> um, Twenty by two one. Is that it? Yeah, that's the one. Okay. So I need to put on a filter. And, oh, I've already got it. Oh, wrong filter. Let's put another filter on. Crop pad. Um, JS7800. 
get rid of some of the bottom <laughs> stuff. Isn't he in higher rest now? Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is actually. <laughs> losing that moniker night guy in high res world <laughs> <laughs> oh almost there we go okay boom got it got it got rid of the bottom bar nobody wants to see that <laughs> okay so you should be able to start it with the button oh okay yeah, yeah. i'm going to turn down the volume one second you may lose control or maybe not Too slow. Okay, this is Night Guy in Low Rest ah! World Castle Days 2020 Work in Progress Update by Vladimir Zuniga, VHZC. First posted June 30th, 2020. This build is from a couple days ago, August 8th. No! <laughs> oh. Ooh, nice game over. Yeah. Very fancy. Uh, other games Canonica, Dore Me, Draco, I Ran, Night Guy in Low Res World, Low Res Racer, Ninja Sky, Peril, A Roach in Space. And you can download this in the Atari Age forums. And we last played it on July 24th to 2020. So about five updates ago. So there's been quite a number of additions. You have to go up the ladder. I did. Uh, the game disagrees with you. No, oh, obviously not fast enough. Mole guy castle days. No, I'm hitting the wrong button, that doesn't help. <laughs> so you're hitting the wrong button some of the time? Yeah. That I think I work. switched it. Oh, come on! It's gotta be faster. See, I'm trying not to hit the fire. <laughs> come on. It's gotta be faster in the Rage ladder. Rage reset! <laughs> crossbow says. Oh, Crossbow. I recognize that name from the uh, forums. He plays this game a lot. Uh. <laughs> so, you will be judged. That's okay. <laughs> go! Jump! Up! Up! It won't go up! I'm not fast enough. It starts to go up while I'm on it. Uh. Um, so here are the updates. Um, on the what? Oh my god. 0722, correct a bugged in screen 30, added four more screens, changed some sprites. 0728, a lot of cosmetic changes, some water levels. Um, oh, you made it up a little bit. <sighs> Darcy like was this. having trouble too. I, I don't like this controller either. I'm blaming the controller. <laughs> oh no. You are getting better. It won't go up. Am, is it because I'm not centered on it properly? Well, or is it because you, it's going up before off. I'm done? Well, yeah, a little but bit I'm of not all. A little bit of both of those. <laughs> this is really pissing me <laughs> off. Can you bring out the Saturn controller? A Saturn controller? Or no. <laughs> I don't know what a Saturn. Um, yes. <laughs> Whatever it is. Um, the D-pad one? Yeah, the D-pad. Okay. <laughs> the NES controller. Yeah. The Saturn controller. Where did, where did you come up with that? I don't know. Isn't it? Isn't there a never... Sega? A Sega, not a Saturn. I mean, a Sega controller. I guess it's the D-pad. Yeah, just a D-pad controller. Oh, you made it! Yeah, finally. Ah, see, this thing's pulling or something. I don't know what it is. No, it's not. I went down and it went right to the right-hand side. You are pulling down on one side or the other with it, then. <laughs> Practice on that ladder, up and down. No. A D-pad might be better for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm not enjoying this at all. Okay. I'm plugging it. Ready? No, nope, you're no. not. Okay, you want to keep going with that. Okay. Okay, now you can unplug it. I really like these controllers. They're too heavy. There you go. Thank so you it's very that. Bouncy, 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 bouncy. Captain Classic. Oops, had my chat. Black and white switch on. Black and white switch. Hmm. Oh, Hog said, oh man, I actually clapped when you made it up the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> I find that first room harder than many others. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually it's challenging. Cha it's because there's a lot of um, the fire in a row and they're oh. not evenly spaced out. So people think they can jump across them. Oh, I have to run and jump, don't I? Can't pull it any further. No, it's fine. Let's try this again. Oh. Yep, special button hidden in the woods to open the castle gates. Oh, 
I'm just not centered. Yeah. <sighs> Poof. Into a magic puff of smoke. See, I'm trying to center myself, and that's why you don't get to it in time. Right. Because if you're off, your jump doesn't get you. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, taking it's too long. Really obnoxious. You can jump onto the ladder. Not really. You slide right off it. I find that room harder, than, yeah. Gotta say that retro Game Boy's controller on the actual 7800 for re to really play this gem. Mmm. I don't know that controller. Retro Game Boy's controller. Probably a 7800 specific <sighs> controller. Hi. Wanna come up here? Okay. No, no, I did that on purpose. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Moles would stick to the ladder better. <laughs> Terrible. Agreed. Terrible. Agreed. Yeah, I have those claws. Digging claws. There we go. Go, 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 go. Yay. Yeah, you really do have to time it properly. Oh, I don't have the graphic up. Don't. No. Oh, sadness. Oh, oh kittens. <laughs> there we go. Surprise cat. You have, to, you have to hold to the right as... Like, I know. That's fine. Bounce, bounce. Oh, is that the jazz band or the Dixieland band? That's the jazz band, I Okay. Think. Oh, no, the Dixieland band. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. That's one I feel like. Yeah. You... There you go. You have to get pretty... Oh, oh. too close. Settle. Oh, that was close, actually. Oh, Alan the Furry got the right first cat right. Second cat you got wrong. Yes, Crossbow777 showed me the way. Prior to that, controller had a hard time. Excellent controller for EXO as well. Very precise. Oh, I'll have to check that out if I remember. Oh! <laughs> I'm ready to do it. Oh, no. You are definitely doing better with this controller. Oh, yeah. Sometimes the arcade controllers are good for the game. Yeah, this is more of a D-pad game. Yeah, you need more precise control. I think I'm yeah. still going to use it. Okay. Oh, no. Jump! Jump! Oh, I was. Oh, there you go. Okay, I'm not using this. <laughs> <laughs> using the other one. And then mm. switching over if it's actually imprecise. If I slide off the ladders, I'll switch over. Yeah. Oh, my God. Buried. So many controllers today. This is the room he actually changed the timing on for the cannonballs. It used to be you could just run into this room and keep running off the ledge and you would fall right between them. Yeah. There's a lag. Mm. There's lag? A, yeah, there's a lag. For some reason, somehow, there is a lag going on. Oh, because it's in the... Because um, it's on the TV? Well, it's, it's the browser one, right? Uh... I play this in the browser all the time. Oh, okay. It's because it's on the other TV. Mm, that's why I'm getting frustrated. <laughs> it could be that it's it's not much, but it's enough that I'm like, Ugh. yeah, you can feel it. Ugh. But if I'm used to it, then maybe I'll be okay. Yeah, it's not much. It's okay. Mm. Oh, you just run into it. Yeah. Oh, oh it feels sloppy. It doesn't it? <laughs> it feels so <laughs> sloppy. But it's actually very tightly controlled. Yeah. Yeah, there is. I can hear. I can hear you hit the button. Yeah. And the delay between you hitting the button and him jumping mm. is actually is quite quite obvious. Oh man, I'm covered in. Oh no, I have to go back now. Fruit flies. Whose fault is that? It's the beer. No. The beer's fault. <gasps> Damn it. <gasps> there are quite a number of lives in this, so 
That was a sort of. stupid death. Stupid, stupid death. Almost ran into it. Yeah, you Going have to. from one room to the other. You have to anticipate. This is such a cute game, though. Oh, so Love the night guy. Oh, so well done. Yeah. Get him. Yeah. Stabby stab. Stabby stab that snake. Got the key now. Good job. So this is 7,800, you, you said? Yes. Yeah. Right now, there is no multi card for sale for the 7800, uh. so I can't play it on a 7800 unless I was one of the lucky few that. Oh my god. Jump into your death. That bought it a long time ago. The multi card. But I was not. It's a snake on the banner. Mm -hmm. Very cute. People have speed runs of this game. Oh, I bet. It's <gasps> close. Oh my god. If you stay down there, it doesn't get you in the in the far right hand right. side, yeah. That's true. Those. Oh my oh, god. Oh, it's so close. Okay, I need an extra life now. Oh. Secret passage. <gasps> Secret passage. Can you tell that he's played this game before? It's only one heart, but it, I need it. <laughs> Not playing well because of the lag. I'll do my best. There's precision movements in this mm -hmm. game. That... Oh, mm. Jesus. <gasps> oh God. That's very close. Mm hmm. That turns off the lava flow from before. Oh, game over. Uh, this is really annoying, the lag. Yeah. After the first jump, you can keep charging at him. Mm. I what he's uh, talking yeah. about. The Lines first boss? NES maybe? graphics, yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah, the 7800 came out at the same time as the NES. So it was uh, a rival, but, mm. not, but not really at all. Mm. <laughs> Unfortunately, one of its downfalls was the um, sound chip in that it. That is good, yeah. It was the same exact sound chip as the 2600. They, oh, they didn't really? upgrade it. Mm. They put an upgraded sound chip in two of their games, but it was in the game itself, not in the system, right? Mm. That, so that was an issue, because <laughs> it had like 1977 level um, mm. sound capabilities, which was Probably not a good, wise decision. Mm -hmm. um, um, the controller was meh, it's okay. Other than that, everything was really good on it. Is there one more thing I need to no. That's, I always forget. Yeah. I am not great at backtracking games or maze games. This one's not like too to bad. Like to keep track of where you need yeah, to it's go. Like, you oh, mean? I have to go back here and I have to retrace my steps and then go get this thing. What was that? Just my foot. Oh. There's a cat's destroying something. <laughs> always the cat's destroying something. Oof. It's usually the case, is it's the cats. I like that little blob thing. Yeah. 
It's not, it's not menacing. I've never died on it. It's just really, really cool looking. It is cool looking. Oh! It's a shortcut. It's also annoying if you didn't know it was there. You have to jump on it in a certain way? Or? You have to jump over it because it collapses. You can jump over it unless he's changed it and not make it collapse. Yeah, I was going to say. If you do it just right. But mostly you hit it because it's mm -hmm. quite wide. Funk. Jump under and then over that. So, I have made it to the water levels um, on the a previous water levels. build. Wow. Uh, oh my God. Um, and defeated the boss at that, mm. or finished the game at that level, but he's added quite a few more screens since then. Mm. So, I think there's like 60 something now. 60 something. I can't remember. It's in my notes. Yeah, I'm getting more used to the delay now. Ah! It didn't look like you cleared it. <gasps> Jeez! Oh, uh. now you need that heart. Oh, no! I, I hate those things so much because it's all timing. Yeah, which is... Very sensitive timing. A problem right now. Oh, they come back. <gasps> oh. uh, this is not working. This is not working. Up to 65 total screens. Wow. The octopus is cool. Yeah, I've killed the octopus. I have not killed Rocky, mm. I think. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I can't really play this properly. I don't know what the problem is with the delay. It's delayed. It's there's definitely remember, a problem. I don't remember. I love that. it how he's making fun of me when I'm complaining about the controller, and then he's like, "Oh, it's really delayed." I'm like, "That's right." <laughs> um, let me <laughs> let me just try something. I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna reload this because I had this sitting for like a couple hours now. Um, I'm gonna try and reload it, see if it's faster, because that doesn't make a lot of sense. So, night guy, night guy. There we go. Okay, full screen again. Might, that might be faster. Seems a bit faster. Of course, I'm used to the slowness now. Hmm. Nah. I don't think it's. I think it's maybe a little faster. I don't know. I don't know. We'll give it one more try. Because we've played this game on the show before without the crappiness. Just call him The Rock. What we could do, actually, is start the questions. Oh my god. That was a rage reset. Because <laughs> that was a pathetic death. We'll start the questionnaire right now. Um, so that I can play at the same time and not get frustrated. And, um, well, still be frustrated. Of course, I might answer slowly. Or maybe it'll distract me from the gaming. Make me not so upset about the delay. Oh, it's just chunky. I don't know what's going on. It's just chunky. You can feel it. It's like skipping around. What is happening? One second. Um, what I propose is that you start asking me questions. Okay. Um, As you play? As I play. Okay. Just so I'm not so frustrated. Oh, okay. I'm going to close down the browser. 
mm. and reload it. So I think that might be an issue. Um, and then I'll hand you the questions. Actually, I'm going to try it on this screen over here. I don't know. No? I don't know. It seems okay. It seems a little laggy. Yeah. Even there. Okay. We're going to do the interview Excuse now. Me. This is interview sent over by Leandro Sa. Okay. For more work games. I think, he, I think he's part of more work games. Anyway, he made the Rally Racer game. Um, Excellent. Said, uh, interview with James O'Brien, Zero Page Homebrew. Hi, James. I'm sending the interview to publish on the Homebrew Brazil page. Feel free to answer only what you find interesting or necessary. If you want, you can answer everything. Even better. Reply when you can or in parts if you prefer. There's no rush. If you don't understand any of the questions, just ask me. Um, hi, James. Homebrew, Homebrew Brazil is grateful for the opportunity to get to know a little about you and your initiative with the Zero Page Homebrew channel. Zero Page Homebrew channel. And then the uh, questions start. So just rephrase anything that's not translated that doesn't, properly. That doesn't sound too good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It is clear that you play the games on your show very enthusiastically. <laughs> yes, I do. You really seem to like Atari and show an adoration that many collectors feel when trying out their collections and games from that time. Yes. Tell us a little about your relationship with, with the games, with, I presume, the Atari games specifically. Oh, well, that's depends what you mean. Um, I'm going to talk in generalities, then. Well, he says a little Relati about your relationship with games in general. With so, games? Yeah. Okay, yeah. not specifically these games. Yeah. Okay, or, or Atari. He'll yeah. Pro probably get in... You can think about it in both terms, but yeah. Okay. Um, like a lot of people my age, we grew up in the era of video games. I was born in 1973. Um, so that makes me prime time for uh, consoles. Consoles. Oh, it's hard oh to answer God. questions and uh, play at the same time, isn't it? I should be like it's kicking challenging. this guy's ass. <laughs> um, so born in the era of the arcade, uh, home consoles, like when I was you know, uh, young, before I was a teenager, you know, um, like Atari came out in 77. I was, uh, quite young, quite young. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't play it when I was four, Yeah. but I, I always remembered arcades and arcade games being around in corner stores and, um, everywhere. Cause they were everywhere in the late seventies, early eighties. Um, <laughs> I'm definitely playing worse answering the question. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I have to think about what I'm saying. Um, so throughout all my life, I can't remember not playing video games. Um, I never had a video game console ever growing up. Ever, ever, ever. The first video game type thing I got was a Commodore 64. Um, and that was in... like. A, mid 80s 85 mm. around um which in ret like i wanted a, an atari i wanted a Nint nintendo um all my friends had those so i had plenty of opportunity to play them but in the end i was actually very grateful to get the commodore 64 because there's a lot of opportunity to learn about computers it's themselves plus tons of opportunity to play games because mm. the c64 had oodles of games just tons and tons of games that you'd be able to trade with your friends you jumped on him yeah do you know you can do that sword first. oh no this is terrible get that heart when you get the chance definitely i'll move on um, to the next oh you keep more to say um so my first memories of console playing were at friends houses um, my friend, the first one I really remember is an Intellivision. Um, that would definitely be in like 1979 when it first came out. Mm. Um, and also an Atari system, which I think my aunt had, and I would borrow it 
uh, when I was visiting my grandma, grandmother. Get! Oh my god. Um, so we had, like, asteroids in all the early games. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I think that's enough okay. for that question. Okay, when did Zero Page Homebrew start? What, which program is broadcast from which city? So I guess, where, where do you broadcast from? Yep. And One which, at a time. Which times and days of the week? So. Okay, what was the first question? So wh when did you start? Um, the idea actually started quite a bit earlier than the show. I would say in 2014 or 15, probably right before, maybe even earlier actually. See, I'm not even thinking. <laughs> it's hard to answer. I feel like I should be playing and you should be answering the questions. How can you read the questions? I, I can't. Could, I could you write. have to read your own questions. <laughs> that might be better. <laughs> that might be better. Trying to answer questions and, uh, but I will not get nearly as far as James would. So that's, that's pretty rough. Yep. James is a bit younger. I was 10 when the 26 yeah. came out. They're quite pricey. Yeah. 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 Sorry, VHZC. I just... Yeah, see, I'm not going to... The browser on this screen <laughs> is gi is giving a lag. I really hate this control. That... Oh, no. I'll switch. Thank you. I will play while you, while you answer the questions that... Uh... We're going to replay this game on the show. Leo sent you... Leo? Is this, it Leo? This is, yeah. Leandro. Leandro. So we're just having a fun play through VHZ. Yeah, this is... This is <laughs> we won't be able to show off the the upper levels because there's some oh, lag issue get through the first that's, room first. that's new. Like, you can probably see it stuttering even. Like, the CPU is not being taxed at all. But for some reason... <gasps> no! Oh! It's you, just being bad. Uh, I can't move now. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's his fault. It is. Um, okay. So I thought up zero page homebrew um, quite a long time ago, probably 2015. Um, and I think that's the first year we went to PRGE mm. as well. Oh, Lord. Um, I think it might have been 2013 or 2015, somewhere oh, in between somewhere that time. Somewhere around there, yeah. I could probably find out by uh, looking when I registered zeropagehomebrew.com oh, yeah. as a domain. Um, or looking up when I started the Facebook page, because I started that way before. Um, or look uh, look up when I um, made the directory on my hard drive. So I'm going to do that. If you can pause for a second. Sure. Because you may not be able to control it. Zero page homebrew. Up a folder. Oh, that's not telling me anything. Uh, no, it's not telling me anything. Never mind. Um, yeah, around 2015. That'll be close enough. Um, and we broadcast from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, the That's west right. coast of Canada, just above Seattle in the U.S. Um, and right now we broadcast on Tuesdays and Fridays. Uh, we used really to do it on funny. Wednesdays and Sundays, Wednesdays and Fridays. Uh, it changes. It was Wednesdays on... and Fridays for a long time. Long time. And then during the quarantine... It was Sundays. We did... Um, Wednesdays and Sundays, I think. Wednesdays and Sundays, which was really nice. And um, I really liked that, the separation between the days. And then when we had to go back to Fridays, um, when Darcy was able to come back, I pushed it to Tuesday so that we had a lot of time in between the shows, which gave me a lot more time to prep it. So right now... Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, are you the pioneer in the initiative to dedicate a channel almost exclusively to homebrew? Now, I can't verify this because I haven't really looked if there's any other channels that just exclusively play homebrew. I would say probably not. Uh, like, I'm talking in general, like all, all <sighs> systems play homebrew. Um, for 2600, yes. Yeah, definitely. This is the only channel that plays just homebrew. There's lots of channels that play 2600 games. Um, they go back and look at old games from the 70s and 80s and 90s. It spanned quite a number of years, <laughs> the 2600, uh, from 77 to 92. Um, 
Exclusively 2600 homebrew, 100%. <gasps> I can almost guarantee that. Um, getting past my bedtime. Oh, good night, Carl G. Yes. <laughs> um, I wish I still had my six switcher and four switcher. Rebuying some VCS stuff now. I'm reading Atari service manual, trying to figure out what to test to get the used oh. system I bought working. Hopefully, it's just reflowing the solder on the pins. We'll get it working. Yeah, getting 2600 working from scratch is not too bad. Um, so homebrews itself, I haven't looked. So somebody else will have to have to figure that out if this is the only homebrew 100% homebrew channel but I really doubt it but the 2600 is definitely one of the most vibrant homebrew communities out there Vectrax is way up there um oh, almost on. um what other homebrew scene is really really big The 8-bit? Atari 8-bit is quite big, too. Yeah. Very, very big. Yeah. Um, the game over screen is very much like the logo for Mary Tyler Moore show. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. And he said, and as I type this, I r realize how much I'm aging myself and regret bringing it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're bringing up Mary Tyler Moore, a show that really does not get even rebroadcast <laughs> and reruns anymore. Um, yeah, you're definitely uh, aging yourself there. <laughs> um, but I, yes, I recognize that. I was trying to figure out what I, it reminded me of, and that is definitely it. Uh, when was your interest in homebrews born? Can you tell us something about it? That's actually, in, the homebrew, I got interested in it quite, quite late. Probably 2013, 2012, when I actually discovered that, hey, there's a lot of 2600 homebrews out there because 2600 is my favorite system. Oh, jump, jump, jump. It's the timing. The timing's really messed on the jumping. It is, yeah. Oh. oh. oh I, it's, it's, there's a delay <laughs> yeah, in the that's jumping. That's exactly Mary Tyler Moore. There's there a is. delay in the jumping, and it's really frustrating. It's not the game. Because you not hit the game. it, jump. It's not hit, the game. Jump. It's not the game. It's not the game. No, 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 no. no. It's this setup right this now. This setup is not working well, unfortunately. I don't know what it is. Oh, I rebooted the TV. One second. One second. I think I can actually fix this. Really? Yes, I can. I can. Because I reset the TV recently. Oh. Because there was an issue. Um... This might be... This, this may work. Because... Oh, no, they're all off. Damn it. Advanced settings? Oh, they're all off. No, it didn't reset any of this. Because mm. I thought... Because there was some, I was having a, an issue, um, and I thought it reset picture mode to standard. That that might fix it. But I doubt it. I think it's something to do with the computer the yeah. sending it over. I don't know. Anyway, oh, you guys can see all of that, can they? No, no, no they can't. No. <sighs> Didn't everyone watch Mary Tyler Moore? <laughs> Probably everyone watching this watched Mary Tyler Moore. I watched Mary Tyler Moore. We're all about that age. Um, I mean, I remember. So, do you remember when I got into homebrews? Because before that, I really didn't have any homebrew games. I didn't buy any. I just had my old games. I just collected Nintendo games and Atari games. And then we went to PRGE. And that what? might have been it, but I knew about it before then. I just remember when you were working on your film that you had the idea that you wanted to do a homebrew show. But I must have loved homebrew be well before that. Yeah. Because why would I come up with that idea? Um, I think it was around 2013, and it was definitely before we went to PRG because I bought homebrew at PRG. Yes, you did. And that was 2013 when we first went there. And I got... Um, Space Rocks. No, I got uh, 
uh, Medieval Mayhem signed by Daryl Spice Jr. Mm. at the 2013. Um, so it must have been before that. So mm. I would say early 2010s. Let's let's put it early 2010s. Um, and it probably <sighs> started not with 2600. It might have started with like Nintendo. Um, sorry, with the NES. There you go. Yeah, you got to turn around right away. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Um, can you tell some, uh, something about it? And yeah, so, and then I discovered homebrew for... Oh yeah, get a heart first. Yeah. Uh, homebrew, and then I discovered homebrew for the 2600, and then probably discovered Atari Age shortly after that, because that's a was the best source for homebrew for the 2600 and there was just tons of it on there um maybe i accidentally discovered it in a a pack of 2600 games that i downloaded like the binaries and it's like oh there's some homebrew in this you can see the lag the chunkiness of those like, going up and down gotta figure that out um so that's where my interest in homebrew was born. It definitely was all about 2600. I'm not really interested in too much in homebrew for any other system. Um, oh gosh. I Coleco and Intellivision, I have some homebrew for that, but they're so expensive, the other systems. Um, I guess because of the limited runs they do or the hardware they have to put into the Intellivision chips. Oops. Oh. oh. End it's up. a lot more expensive like you to get a boxed copy it's like 60 or 70 dollars for homebrew for intelligent intellivision and coleco and for the 2600 it's you can get it as low as like 40 dollars for homebrews yeah genesis homebrews are reasonably priced uh, usually oh okay i haven't really looked into too many genesis homebrews so i i am subscribed to a bunch of you know video game channels and i have seen some genesis homebrews but i just like something about tw i'm sure it'll come up in another question um whose idea was it to create the homebrew zero page homebrew channel well it's mine um <laughs> she doesn't care about that <laughs> the, she's she's here to play the games That's not about right. creating content or no. setting up <laughs> websites although or... i do like making patch sas sashes just yes. for the record yeah um, can you tell us something about it? Well, it, it, it all came together as one big idea, right? I, I always wanted to stream the games online. I have a huge history in, uh, online video streaming. Mm. I've been streaming video since 2003, um, online, and I've been streaming audio content. online yeah. content since 1999, technically 98, but really 100 percent started in 99 oh good jump um so i've been doing this thing oh it didn't uh, jump um in a different formats for a long time so it wasn't the streaming that was the issue like i i knew how to do that that wasn't a problem at all there you go oh. it was and i'm a stickler for uh quality so to set this show up, I wanted to make sure I had an RGB Atari 2600 before I was streaming the show. And that was one of the holdups, actually. Mm. The second holdup was getting a Frame Meister so that I could um, also upscale it with the best quality possible. So I needed those two things to fall into place. And Darcy helped me put the RGB into the 2600. And the Frame Meister was just really, really, really expensive. Oh, didn't time that. Really expensive. So, get him. Oh, Ooh, that, that was, was just in time. Lucky. Luckily, the bullet disappeared as you killed him. Um. <laughs> oh. Boo. Uh, tell us who named the program uh, and what zero page means in the case of homebrews. Um. I named it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Zero Page is... Um, it is a special part of memory. Um, when you're programming, 
and usually only applicable to 8-bit systems, that you're able to address quicker because you only need to use um, one byte to address it rather than two. Um, so it saves time and memory. So it's it's used in programming, uh, the zero page oh, it's called. God. And that's what I named it because it, it sounded cool. Zero page. Yeah. Um, and it meant something. And you can represent it as, as zero zero as well. And I thought that was that was really cool. Um, how did you choose your team for the program? <laughs> I roped them in. <laughs> she lives here. Uh, um, I, there, I had no choice, apparently. I don't know. <laughs> yep. Um, I'd always... Um, and I've been friends with Darcy for ever. Yeah. Childhood, S childhood friend. Since 86. Oh. So... 86. Know. How long is that? That's a long time. <laughs> you met him in high school? Yeah, I met him in grade grade um, grade 8. Wow. So That's a long time. It's yeah. a long time. So whatever 86 is. 9, 9 uh, 34, 35 years? 35, there you go. Yeah. 35 years. Happy 35th anniversary, Darcy. <laughs> if you're still watching. Um, um, and uh, Erlen, he's into video games. He's into media. Um, well, I've done project. Him. I work with yeah. him on projects. Um, he said yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had guests on before um, yeah. that are that have been like one-offs. That's like zero pixels away from yeah, your helmet there. Same with that. It's Living okay. on the edge. I know I'm fine. And um, yeah, they decided to stick around and stay on the show. Yeah. So there you go. And I knew I needed a co-host. Um, because I would be playing, and the other person needs to be talking, and one person can read out, etc., etc. Uh, like reading registers as opposed to memory, correct? Time, not memory. Okay. There's a big Vectrex Facebook group and sub form in the Atari ages for Vectrex. Yeah, Vectrex is very big. It's a lot of. I have a ton of Vectrex homebrew, actually. That's my second favorite thing to collect for homebrews. So. Vectrex. Just jumping all over the place. Um, tell us a little bit about Tanya, Erlen, and Darcy. Seems, <laughs> seems to me that you're a great team. I can't. I kind of went over that. Yeah. And they all come to video game night here. Well, yeah. She is already here. I am always. Um, and play <laughs> and play the games. So that also helped. Uh... Um, how is the participation of Brazilians in the Zero Page Homebrew Channel? Have you noticed any movement in this direction? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, especially when we play Brazilian homebrew, of course. Um, I have found that the Brazilian homebrew community is very different. Um, it's a huge community. Yeah. It's, it's surprisingly large. Yeah. Like, it's massive. But um, there's a very different approach to homebrew there. Mm. Um, whoa. <laughs> Whew, that was close. That they're very protective of their homebrew. Wow. Because there's a big problem with piracy. It was mm. explained to me. Um, by a Brazilian programmer. There's a big pri piracy problem. So they rarely put out binaries mm. to try out because they know somebody will put that on cartridge. I mean, there's already a problem in um, in general with Atari 2600 piracy. And not, not necessarily piracy, but more like, well, it is piracy. Taking somebody else's game and putting it on cartridge and selling it. Um, but apparently it's really bad in Brazil. Mm. So th the only way to play the games is to buy the games, mm. um, which presents a problem for this show. Because you usually get the binaries. <laughs> I, I get the binaries early. And luckily they've been opening up to me oh. because I've been playing some of the, the Brazilian homebrews now. And... Um, they, they they know that I'm trustworthy. You're not going to run, run off with... Not going to make cartridges yeah. or whatever <laughs> with the games. Um, but I, I understand their concern because yeah. if it leaks out, they all the time and effort they put into it just goes to nothing, yeah. right? Uh, and they want to, you know, continue to make the games. So I understand their concern. Mm -hmm. um, buying legal games in South America is traditionally super expensive. Everything yeah, is way marked up. Lot. Hence lots of buy, uh, piracy. So it kind of goes hand in hand. If the games are really expensive, there's more 
um, room for piracy mm -hmm. because they can mark them down and still make a lot of money on the pirate pirated games. Um, but yeah, when I show a Brazilian game on the show, oh my god, there's a flood of people come in. So yeah, it's it's been really really good and really fun. And um, the Brazilian games I found are really oh, oh time for terribly. It. Oh, it's the delay. The delay gets you. Yeah. Because you're trying to you're trying to adjust. Uh, homebrews. What's <gasps> oh, oh no. I'm dead. I haven't gotten very far. Not much. Question past there. nine. Uh -huh. <laughs> what style of homebrew do you like best? Ports, original games, unreleased games, remakes, complex games, simple games. I think it falls more into genre categories than than those. Um, you like shooters. Like, yeah, I like shooters. I like, I love platformers. platformers. Oh my god, those are my top two: is shooters and platformers. Um, action puzzle games. I, I'm, I'm appreciating more. Mm. Um. You could almost, this almost goes into the realm of action puzzle, but not really, because it's fairly linear. I would say it's very much yeah. a platformer, yeah. You do have to go back, but it's still mm -hmm. linear. Like, you go get a key, then you go open this thing. Um. <laughs> it goes so close to them, it's so scary. Oh. Um, I do love our, the original Atari games, and we do play them for... Yeah. I, I, <gasps> oh my god. Didn't mean Your to do that. Pinky toe is hanging on to the edge. Um, I don't recall it. New Marauder costing that much when I bought it. Yeah, New Marauder looks good, but it is costly, the shipping from Brazil. Sorry, I'm jumping back and forth. New Marauder cost $95 when it came out. Including shipping, that would definitely be 95 in Canadian. Oh my god. Yeah, the exchange rate is kills me too with homebrews up in Canada. Um... <clears throat> yeah, platformers and shooters. Totally above and beyond all the other things, for sure. But I love all types of games. Games I... Types, styles, or things in games that I do not like are mazes. Black mazes? Dark and mazes? <laughs> mazes in the dark. Yes. That is the worst, worst thing I hate in games because I'm terrible for memorization. And in the dark, it's even worse. <laughs> Because you have to memorize a maze and do it in the dark. So any game with a, a dark maze, I'm just going to hand it to the other person. Um, or I have to map it out. Oh, RPGs. Like Penalt. You oh don't like Oh my god, them? I love, I love, I yeah, love. I, I just forgot. Say. I forgot to include that. Um, but it has to be like the, the right style of RPG. But so far on the Atari, most of them can't be that complex. It's, it's right in that nice zone where it's not complex but it's complex enough that you can play with stats and up your weapons and armor but it's not too you don't have to do too much balancing um what were the first homebrews that really caught your attention i can't remember i have a terrible terrible memory um for it was, homebrews it was, the first one i can remember because it was the first one i bought was Medieval Mayhem. Oh, yeah. Because I love Warlords. Because It's one of the best games. Because you can play four people at once on it. Yeah, It's I a four-person paddle game. And it was always a huge hit when we had played the Atari at parties. And we'd, we'd have it in the corner playing because we could have enough people over to play it. So that I would say that's probably it. And, of course, you'll hear more about it on Friday when we talk to Daryl Spice Jr. about that. Um... What is your favorite homebrew, and mo what recent homebrews are you most interested in? Favorite homebrew. That's a Ooh, dangerous question. I don't know. You are totally digging Zookeeper right now, though. Um, it's really hard, though. But That's... you, 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 you've been enjoying that one a lot. A lot. That of of recent games, yeah. But it's so sh it's so short. That's the problem because it's so hard. Um. The one I keep going back to a lot is Bosconian. Oh, yeah. Bosconian is That's really... so good because it's a shooter. It's like, oh, it's, I can't That's get too that dangerous. close. I can't get that close. Oh. Jump it about mid, it's quite a delay. 
Like, then go for it. There's lots of time. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Um, are all your homebrews on a shelf right off camera? They're all here. <laughs> they go from they're they're pretty much the whole shelf. There's some SNES right at the end. This whole first shelf is homebrew. And uh, next time, well, maybe not next time, but one of the times when Erlen is over, looks like you almost pushed that. Um, we're gonna go through my Atari Twenty Six Hundred homebrew. Oh, we didn't move enough. Freaking heck. What's under there? I think it might be... No. You should get an extra life right now. Where? So go on that shelf. Oh, that's where it is. I was trying to remember where that was. Ugh. Safely. Yeah, studio tour. We will do a studio tour. And then go all the way to the yeah, yeah, There's yeah, no yeah. dangers. Um, yeah, Bosconian at the moment. I would probably say, looking at all these... Right um, or Wall Jump Ninja, but that has. <gasps> that's, but that's a good game. It's ah! very, <laughs> but it's very limited. Like you're doing the same thing over and over again, so it doesn't have a lot of I depth. I love that game though. It's really well done, but and that's probably one really I played. Entertaining. Played the most. Of course, Galagon's really really fun. I just wish I was better at Galaga, um, so I could play it better. Um, oh. Yeah, let's go with that. Um, Favorite games? Probably just about anything from Champ Games or from Spiceware. Those are amazing. I love Wall Jump Ninja. Panky the Panda was amazing. I've completed it, so I don't need to play it again. <laughs> um, oh, come on. I do not like the delay. Penalt. Definitely in my top right now. I'm going to see what, out of the games that are coming out, shortly I'm just gonna list off of i'm gonna buy them all so they're all really really good um but of the ones that are coming out soon come on scroll scroll um deep stone catacomb unbelievable that's a, that's a nice light rpg game mm. it's it's very linear but you get to move around a bit um, there's upgrades, there's things to collect, various uh, enemies. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, Ninja Sky and Low Res World, unbelievable. Um, Robot City's really good. Robot uh, City's Tower good. of Rubble's uh, incredible. Um, Venture Reloaded, I can't wait to play that again. Um, and Zookeeper's coming out as well. So those are really, really good games. There's so many. There are so many. I just feel bad not listing a lot of them because there's just so many good games oh my god the original arcade game is named bosconian yeah sorry draconian is the 2600 version of bosconian and and um i play bosconian when i go to our local arcade too oh that was close but right now going to arcades is eh, it's a lot lots of touching touching things Unfortunately. And, and breathing right into a, a piece of glass right in front of you. Um, what? Two, 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 two. Have any Brazilian homebrew already caught your attention? Well, I've, we've only played a couple. Played. Um, Rally Racer? Rally Racer, and we played. Oh, um. What's that? The monk one. Yeah, the devil y oh, monk one. Oh, it's wonderful. That one's great. That one's really good. I'm yeah, really looking yeah, forward to that the, being. Just the whole narrative behind yeah. it, too, is really awesome. So I'm really looking forward to that one. A new Marauder looks good, but I have to buy it, and I don't have that much money to buy. Like, I have to pay like $100 Canadian to get it up here. And, that is quite a bit. And it is a port of Marauder, I believe. <sighs> it, looks, it looks like it's not a port, but a. Uh, a hack of Marauder. Unholy, thank you, Arena Foot. That's it. Yeah, that one's really, really good. So that one has caught my attention. But like I said before, you can't, you have to buy the Brazilian games. And I don't know much about the Brazilian homebrew scene. And I can't really, it's difficult because you have to translate everything from Portuguese. <laughs> and Facebook does a pretty good job of that. But yeah, So I, I am subscribed to the Brazilian um, all the Brazilian homebrew Facebook groups. And I've noticed more and more, there are more Brazilians posting in the non-Brazilian Facebook groups now. And so luckily, yeah, Facebook 
translates those, but I don't see them a lot in the Atari Age forums. And if they yeah. are there, they they do usually type in English, so it's mm. hard to tell who's who. Um, have you noticed a considerable increase in the creation of new games for classic consoles today? I can only speak for 2600 because I follow it That's very what closely. You're following, yeah. And there's so many. <laughs> so many. Um, Arena Foot can give you a better um, numbers on that because he follows, <sighs> oh, follows it really closely, like to the exact number. Um, I think probably this year is probably tied for last year, but it's not over yet. But I think last year was the biggest ever yet like it keeps increasing more and more and more um every year um hopefully this show helps spur that along because it's another outlet for people to show off their games and to discover new games um definitely like the f like the facebook groups the atari age forums there's a lot more activity and a lot more people developing games that have never developed it before um Hey, Dr. Moo Cows. Yes, this one is very cool. I can't wait for this to come out of cartridge. And he's, VHZ, he's a very fast worker, so... You know, Amazing, it'll yeah. Be coming out, it'll be <laughs> yeah. coming out shortly, I'm sure. He just keeps adding more and more levels all the time. Like, he could have stopped a long time ago, and it would be totally a full game. But uh, I think he just likes to fill up the fill up the memory as much as he can. Um, Arena Foot, Rough Numbers. Uh, 95, 1, 96, 0, 97, etc., etc., etc. Um, yeah, 2019, 109 versus 2018, 106. So they have been steadily oh increasing year over year. More and more. Um, big surge, 2015 onward. Big, big increase, 2015 onward, yeah. As of 12-5-2019, compiled by Thomas Yanch. I like the abbreviation of Thomas Yanch's last name by Arena Foot. <laughs> um, is it correct to say that you have an adoration for the Atari 2600? I would say it's an understatement <laughs> to say I have an adoration for the 2600. Oh. oh. The timing. The timing is so bad. Yeah. Oh. I love the 2600. Would you say that? Yes. <laughs> I, I have um, a big pile of t-shirts in the other room uh, that are to do with the 2600. Um, let's just switch out of that. We'll come back to that game another day once yes. I've solved the, the problems. The issue with the delay there. Most yeah. games release in a year. I think it's probably this year. And I'm actually keeping track um, in a list. Of course, I haven't counted them, but it's quite a few. Yeah, that's a lot. Let's see if I can put it into a spreadsheet really quick. <laughs> Putting it in a spreadsheet. Yeah, because that'll be able, I'll be able to count the lines. Really it's how many? Quickly. Yeah. Uh, new spreadsheet. Hit paste. That kind of worked. Sort of. It, it did. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, it did. Quick count. So, minus two lines there. It is... This is just homebrew, not hacks. 93, mm -hmm. so far. Excellent. And it's the eighth month, so we have four more months. So we're two-thirds of the way through. Wow, that's a lot. 93. Yeah. What were the numbers? Oh, I can scroll back here. Mm. 93. Oh, yeah. We'll probably make... Yeah, like there are more homebrew Atari 2600 games being made right now than at the height of Atari and Activision. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, 93. But these are like work in progress that have been They haven't been added finalized. To. They're just work in progress. Yeah, yeah. It depends how you count them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. I. What a time to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> I have an adoration for the Atari 2600. It's the system I play the most. Yeah. Obviously, I have a show about it, dedicated mm -hmm. completely to it, so I do love it. Um, it's probably the first console I ever played. might have been in television, but I played it a lot in the 80s. Mm. Um, it's the first console I ever bought when 
when I you was, had the opportunity? When I was an adult, like I never owned a console. Really? Yeah, it was the first one I bought because mm -hmm. I went to like flea markets. Like, oh, oh 2600 I love the 2600 Yeah, lovely. It's $10 for a system? Yeah. 50 cents a game? <laughs> Load up. Those days are gone. Yeah. Um, so, yes, I love it. Um, you are Canadian, correct? Yes. Which city did you live in your childhood in? It's a suburb outside of Vancouver. It's Langley. But just say Vancouver, Canada. Same thing. Suburb of Vancouver, Suburb basically. of Vancouver. Yeah. You played Atari during which years of your childhood? Um... Probably 79 onward until everybody got rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> and then I picked it up again, I would say in 93, 1993. Yeah. When everybody was dumping them, I guess, at yeah. that point. Yeah, yeah, 93, yeah. 94, I would say 93. Um, uh, how old are you and in what years and what decade? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I already answered that before. Yeah. Tell us what the local scene of Atari was like in your childhood in your city. I don't know. People had them. Yeah. <laughs> There's no scene. People just had them. It was the system. But you had friends growing up who had a lot of consoles. Like you were yes. saying you didn't have any yourself, but it sounds like you had a lot of friends who you'd yep. hang out with and that's how you got exposed to all the consoles yes. out there. Yeah. So my friends had variety mm. they had coleco they yeah. had television most had atari yeah but not more than average like there was a scene yeah. <laughs> yeah. um yeah most of them had atari yeah because that's just the rea reality it was of common it. yeah outside of that and then everybody switched to nes yeah everything else was gone yeah i it never was all nes i never saw genesis in wherever never saw genesis it was Nintendo, 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 until PlayStation 1 came out. Yeah. And then it was just a free-for-all. Everybody just had a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Because I've often said, I, I mean, I didn't have an Atari. I'm a little bit younger than you, so the Atari wasn't really what I played on. Yeah. But I had a Commodore 64, and that my father bought in the mid 80s yeah. and that was where i played video games yeah and then eventually i got an nes so those are my consoles i guess i'm i'm a little bit later than the atari but i love the atari yeah. Um, so yeah it was c64 for me and all my friends c64 was big for me either too. my friends were my friends because they had a c64 yeah. <laughs> but a lot of them did a yeah. lot of people had a commodore 64 in my area like everyone i knew had a c64 see i, I... one person i knew had an atari like an Atari computer, but that was it. They or a had PC, them, or a PC. They actually had, my grade four teacher had one at school, which is unusual, because it usually was apples. And then um, I had one friend down the street who had one, but I really mm. didn't know many people who had Commodores. Hmm. But my dad was a big math nerd, and that's <clears throat> he loved programming, and mm -hmm. he programmed IBM machines in the 60s, and... So he had a he he was the influence there, I guess. But I didn't have like a community of people, which is a shame when I think about it. Yeah. In hindsight, oh. I wish I had more exposure to other people who also, that. you know, played and things like that. But anyway, yeah. um, was it easy to buy Atari games in Canada in the eighties? Yeah, it's just like the U.S. Mm. They're everywhere. Mm. Were all the titles released <laughs> easily into the stores? I don't know because I didn't buy them. Um, but yes, they were. Yeah. It was not. It was just like the u.s and canada yeah yeah you could go in and buy any system any game it was all very readily accessible oh yeah darcy had a radio shack oh <laughs> trs 80 so he had some early computers yeah <clears throat> um what was your favorite game amongst these cartridges that you had what did you like about them um like i said i didn't have them i had a, uh, a c64 um, I liked a variety of games, um, mm. just whatever. There were so many games. Um, but when I did play the Atari 2600, I did like Phoenix, which is a shooter yeah. um, game. Um, and uh, I liked Galaxian as well, which is another shooter. There was no such thing as platforms. Yeah. <laughs> a platformer, like literally, there no, was no such thing exist. as a platformer. Yeah. In, in the 2600 era. Mm. Um, mm. Um, what was your favorite childhood game? Speaking of Atari 2600, that kind of, that's kind of the same question. Um, 
Yeah, probably in that era, um, in the 2600, because I had very little exposure to it, it was probably, it was probably Phoenix at the time. It was a really, really fun game. Mm. Um, Pitfall, Pitfall, Vanguard, Vanguard. I loved Vanguard. Thank yeah. you, Kev. <laughs> that, that was another game I played the hell out of because it was another, um, freeform shooter game. You were in a, a cavern though, in a, in a kind yeah. of a cave and it switched from horizontal shooter to vertical shooter. Mm. It was crazy for a 2600. Yeah. Pitfall is considered to be the first platformer. Oh, okay. Sorry. Pitfall. Yeah. There we go. Uh, it's kind of a platformer, I guess. You're not hopping on platformers. There's just, there's like two levels, but it's like, it's like a precursor mm. almost to platformers. Yeah. Pitfall 2. Yeah. That would be more like a platformer because you're actually hopping off of platforms, but you fall in pits. Yeah. Pitfall mm. 2 is definitely firmly in the platformer genre, but Pitfall could be argued. Yeah. Um, mm. Okay. I don't know how we got off of that. Oh, yeah, favorite games. Favorite games. You probably know the complete library of Atari 2600 today. No, I actually don't. I see games posted in Facebook, on Facebook all the time, of the old games. Yeah. I'm like, what is that? that game looks crazy. And yeah. I go and look through the list, and there it is. Because there was hundreds and hundreds of games. Mm. I know all the like the Atari games that were put out, and the Activision games, and the Imag Imagic games that were put out. Like, all the big titles. But there's a lot of third-party people that put out games. And that you've never heard of kind of thing. I get surprised all the time. Yeah, And yeah, I go yeah. and look in the list and like, oh, they, that looks... Most of them are terrible. Yeah. Um, because they just never rose to the, the level of the, like, Activision. Uh, like the Activision games, yeah. 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 Um, I know most of them. What is your favorite game released in the 70s or 80s today? Um... Probably I will turn to Activision. Yeah. Um, but even then, I don't know. Um, I really, really enjoyed Spider Fighter. Yeah. That was a very good People shooter. Have mentioned Spider Fighter, yeah. Yep. Because it's crazy. It's so much going on. Yeah. In Spider Fighter. Um, taking a look at these games. Hero's really good. Actually, Hero could be a platformer, but you kind of fly in it. Um, Pitfall's fun, but I don't usually play it. Keystone Capers is good. Mega Mania. I played the hell out of that game mm. when I because that's another shooter. Um, that one I played a lot. Mm. River of Raid. I didn't play it too much, even though that's a definitely planted in the shooter yeah. category. Yeah, I yeah, didn't yeah. play it too much. Oh, spicy. Oh, Spice Horse still here. Hi. Um, did you own any other console at the time besides the Atari 2600? He's, a, he's assuming already. I did own it. <laughs> it's a good assumption, but I didn't. I own almost all of them now. <laughs> I don't have a Neo Geo. Um, and I don't really... like. You'd have to go pre-3D systems. I own almost all of them. Yeah. Pre -CD. A lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pre-3D, because I'm not really interested oh, in 3D. Oh, pre-3D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because early implementations of 3D are kind of janky. <laughs> and, yeah. And it's like, what am I looking at? And it's so pixelated. I'd rather have a pixel game, like, drawn with yeah. pixels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Than... The horrible... Weird... Triangle... Triangle-headed triangle people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you there. <laughs> yeah, Demon Attack's good. Yeah, but Demon Attack and... and um, and Phoenix, I find similar-ish, but uh, Phoenix has the spaceship mm. level. Um, 471 titles released for the VCS 2600. Might be even more. Depends. Depends on. Uh, yeah, I, like there's official and unofficial and third parties and anyway. Um, so I owned none, no systems until I was until 93, whatever. So yeah. 20. 20. And then I started collecting start 2600, collecting. Um, an NES, just that for a long, long time. Mm. I wish I collected more, but I didn't have any money back then, so I couldn't, couldn't have bought anything. Um, but you name it now, I have it pretty much. Turbo Graphics, all the Nintendos, 
all the Ataris, Channel F, <laughs> Vectrex, I don't know, anything, all of them, all of them, Genesis, lots and lots. Um, in television, in television too, Coleco, there you go, all of them, lots and lots. Um, not, not too many of the really weird, obscure ones though, but more like all the mainstream stuff. Um, where am I in this? What was your favorite? Do you want any, any consoles? What's the game you most liked in childhood other than the Atari 2600? Probably have to be a C64 game. Um, I really like Toy Bazaar, which is actually an Activision game. Um, mm. It's a platformer action game where you hop over the... It's really weird. I'm not going to even explain it. It's super weird. <laughs> um, I played a billion games back then. Probably Ultima is yeah. way up there. Because it was a really in-depth RPG game. Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. I'd have to see a left. I have a terrible memory, so this is a terrible question. Mm -hmm. So many games, so many games. Oh, in television game I really liked was the AD&D games. Those were really good. Mm. Um, what is the game you like most about any other platform today? Mm. Modern? What is the game you like most on any other platform today? Uh. Oh my like modern games? Modern games? Oh, there's so many. I mean, you you like modern RPGs, like Fallout. Yeah, those are... those. I, you haven't played I, a I've, lot. I, I've I've played play, a while. I have more time to play than he does right now. So. I've been kind of collecting retro modern games now. A little bit, yeah. Like pixely style And you like games. independent games too. Like you, yeah. you tend Simpler to... Games. Like limited run, you, you tend to... When they come out with new games, you tend to really go for a lot of the limited run games because it's like the smaller Animal producers. Crossing. Animal Crossing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it'd be more genres <laughs> than, than specific games at this point because I play a, a variety of games. You do play all kinds of stuff. I've been playing Mr. Driller lately. I'll say lately. Yeah. Mr. Driller Drill Town. Yeah. Oh my god, I but love those, it. But those have very arcadey, those are arcadey feeling games. Very arcadey. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Driller's good. Shantae, Shantae is very, oh my god. very good. I love the Shantae yeah. games. Yeah. Um, and I have a lot of them. Not yeah. not the original, unfortunately. Like the uh, Game Boy Color one, because that costs an arm and a leg. I'm not going to have it. Luckily, they're reissuing it on Game Boy cartridge soon. Oh my god, that's crazy. It's going to be awesome. Mm. Um, what are your favorite classic consoles in order of preference may include computers um, Atari 2600 number one um, I don't play it a lot but I love the Vectrex that's probably number Vectrex two Vectrex is just awesome it just, it just is it's super 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 cool it's just super cool <laughs> it's just the awesomest ever yep. um, probably uh, NES is probably the next one yeah. That I would say how, how much like, I play so them. There's so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, then probably, oh, I'd, I'd have to put C64 second, actually. Let's bump the Vectrex down. One. Yeah. He says it, it can include computers, too. <laughs> um, Vectrex Homebrew Companion Book Series? Yes, mm, Arena Foot. Ooh. It's uh, it's up for grabs. Yeah. Nope, nobody's made one. <laughs> no. Yep. There's quite a bit there. Reissuing Metal Storm for the NES. Mm. Speaking of that, where is my Metal Storm? Where is it? Spelunky. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Metal Storm for the NES? It's right here. Right here. In the, sealed the reissue, in box? the reissue. Oh, the reissue. That's because I haven't played it yet. Oh. The original Metal Storm is very expensive. Oh, I, I see. wish I bought it a long time ago. Um, I don't play Genesis very much. I actually even contemplated selling all my Genesis mm -hmm. stuff <laughs> recently, yeah. but then I went, "What am I doing? Uh, You're crazy." Um, uh, what else? SNES, I guess. I don't play that too much. <laughs> Um, if I had more time, I would put it all in order, but it gets pretty nebulous after there. It would be, and then Coleco would be in there somewhere, uh, probably at the bottom of that list that yeah. I've already put so far. Uh, nested list. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just tilt the camera up 90. Yeah. What's up? What is up there? <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. You get a quick shot. Yeah. Here we go. There's a bunch of stuff. 
There's a bunch of stuff. And some awards. And some some movie awards. awards up there, too. Yeah. But uh, we'll give you a proper tour at some point. Tour later. Yeah. Because there's way more than that. Oh, and then all the, there's like uh, Vectrix. All the consoles are here. Vectri over there, and there's a bunch of other stuff. And that whole closet is filled with games. Yeah. And under the bed is filled with games. Yes. What movie awards? Oh, that's a whole other topic. <laughs> yeah, I, I, in my day job, I'm a filmmaker. Yeah. Um, an award-winning filmmaker. Yes, that's right. Anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you can look me, my name up. Yeah. Look my name up. You'll yeah. find his, it. His documentary is currently on Amazon Prime. And the Prime. Atari Awards, too. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's true. I gave myself my own awards. <laughs> yeah. They don't mean anything. I just printed they're another cute, one. They're cute, though. Yes. Yeah, they're cute. <laughs> and the Atari Awards. Um, do you consider yourself a collector? Yes and no. I don't... I've kind of stopped collecting a little bit. Because I've yeah. kind of completed everything I've wanted. The stuff you really like, yeah. I'm more yeah. now into homebrews. Like, I pretty much exclusively yeah. buy homebrews. And, um, like, limited run stuff. And, and stuff that catches my eye as well. Mm. For modern systems. Mm. Um, but I've... And, and when I run across a really cool old game, it's like, oh my god, that's really cool Atari game. I really need it. Um, and Because it's, it's awesome and I want to get it. Um, I've got all the Vectrek stuff. I have a full collection of Vectrex. Yay! Except, <laughs> except Mr. Boston and my and and Mindstorm. Mine, mine. Mindstorm. Mind Isn't Mindstorm. Isn't it? Now my mind is going crazy. Metal Storm. Yeah, you've thrown me off. Yeah. Mine, mine. Built-in game. Yeah. Somebody will correct me. Um, <laughs> would you use, consider yourself a collector? Mindstorm two. Yes, there we yeah, go. Mindstorm That's two. It. it says Mindstorm on it, but it's Mindstorm two. Yeah. Uh, homebrew is the ultimate small batch. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I don't consider myself a collector anymore, even though if you looked at my stuff, you'd be like, oh my God, yeah, you're a collector. You're yeah. insane. But I haven't, I'm not going for full collections anymore or complete in box or sealed or anything like that. Yeah. I wanted my Vectrex collection and I'm happy with that. I'm not going for full anything else. Yeah. I started to go for a Channel F full, but the upper numbers are insane. They're worth hundreds each and I don't really care mm -hmm. that much to spend $100 Two hundred dollars in a game I'll never play. Uh, when did I start collecting? Uh, that would be ninety-three. Like I said, when I first bought my first Atari system mm -hmm. in ninety-three, ninety-four. Captain Classic is asking about per Perfect Fourteen. Yep. Yeah, it's it fine. There's some swearing. There's some oh. sexually, like someone talking about uh, abuse, but it's not very graphic. That's it. It's yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's the worst. I think there's, there's a little bit of swearing. A tiny bit of swearing, the most minorest, minorest nudity you could ever think of. Yeah. <laughs> for about two seconds. Yeah. That's it. But one person does talk about childhood abuse. Yeah. And again, it's not graphic. It's, it's not graphic. very lightly touched, but yes. I, I would say if your kid <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> if, if your kids are level headed and they're brought up like I, I would say if they're if they're preteens to teens it would be fine. Oh, if yeah. they're younger than that, you might Iffy. might be a little yeah. 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 Um, but it's got good reviews. So. Yeah. Go it. And <laughs> it's, it's got, got good a, reviews. It's, got it's a, his film and it's very good and it's got good and reviews. And it's got a good, a lot of really good moral things in it that kids may want and to, especially girls. to learn about. Yeah. Especially about yeah. body image. So. About body image. Yeah. Um, how did you feel during, oh, wait a second. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, what item in your collection do you like the most? Hmm. Do I, like, maybe I treasure the most? I have the rarest thing in my collection, which means nothing to me. Hmm. It's the Vectrex um, magazine. And there's, like, five in the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the rarest thing I own. The um, Vectrex magazine. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Where did that come from? I bought a big lot of Vectrex And it was stuff. in there with it. And it was in there. And you found out it was super rare. And then I looked it up later and it was like, oh my God, this is ultra rare. Like, <laughs> maybe 10 in the world. Wow. Because you had to have bought a Vectrex. Okay. You've had to have sent away to get them to subscribe to it. Okay. It was free, but hardly anyone did that. And then it has to survive for 30 years. Wow. Yeah. Cool. So there's hardly any of them. Wow. That's yeah. cool when you so find stuff like that. So look it up. Like there's maybe 10, I think. I don't, I don't know. Who knows how many there are. 
Well, it's it's really rare and really expensive. Yeah. And I it was just included in a in my big purchase when I got most of my collection mm -hmm. for Vectrex. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, <gasps> Arena Foot. I did and never got the oh, magazine. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> Are you careful with your collection? Yes. Extremely careful. Yeah. Like all of my Atari 2600 games or homebrew are in plastic containers. I do not let people manhandle my stuff. Uh, um, he gets very annoyed when I come in to try and dust or do things. He's like, no, 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 I'll do I'll it. Dust, I'll dust, I'll <laughs> dust, I'll do it. Yeah. Do you let people handle your items without any concern? No. No. Because, <laughs> yeah, sell, sell, sell the uh, Vetrex yeah. mag. That's a problem with me. I don't sell things yeah. when they're high, but, but I should. I mean, I should sell the Vectrex magazine. It means nothing. Um, what is my most prized possession? Is that what he says? No, I, I skipped it. Oh. What item do you like the most in it? Like the most? My RGB 2600. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. It's so beautiful. It's amazing you can play it on, on these big screens. Yeah, combine that with the Harmony card and I can yeah. play any games and I can put it on the big screen and stream it beautifully. Yeah. That's probably, and you know, that's probably my most prized possession i guess yeah um do you know that the brazil was and still is one of the largest atari and video game markets in the world what have you heard about it be i knew that south america was big on Atari. was big on retro gaming because after the market crashed here they were looking for ways to make their money um in on other all these, markets right? on all these games yeah. because they're like nobody's buying them in north america panic panic yeah and they shipped them all to south america yeah uh, for cheaper uh, and sold them off and it became huge there uh, and i mean that makes a lot of sense it was a new market for them so. yeah and there was one game it was like a soccer game and it was put out on like like a super old system and a super new system at the same time because in Brazil, they were still using really old um, consoles. And so they had to still release it there because there was such a huge market. Well, I've heard that. I can't remember I've heard what that, system it was. But. I, I don't know if it was South America. I've heard that in Africa yeah. with the PS consoles yeah. where because the older consoles were still in use, they were still making games for, I don't know if it was PS3 or PS2. Right. Even when the PS, I think when the PS4 came out, there right. were still active PS2, so there were yes. older, there were new games for older consoles. That might be what I'm thinking. Because of. the market was still there, so they Enough. were, yeah. especially for sports games. So I remember hearing that, which is really is quite fascinating, but it makes a lot of sense too. Like yeah. not everyone wants to spend six hundred dollars or has anything no. near that. And there's so many games for these systems that you could never run well, out, and you can keep getting new games. You, you're new still games. playing old new games on old systems you know like it makes it's, sense it makes sense so. exactly yeah we uh, had no idea of crash market yeah exactly they yeah they just made a new market yeah oh vh said he is in chile <laughs> oh wow yeah that's and really interesting yeah it's different every you know all the markets are different and what what comes yeah. into them and stuff like that yeah um do you think that homebrews can become rare and even expensive pieces for future collections oh this is a contentious question um, cause there's a lot of homebrews that are put out in limited ed editions and I see them selling very well. Yeah. Um, like they put out 20 copies of this hack. It yeah. doesn't happen too much with homebrews, like mostly with hacks and they get snapped up immediately. And I think it's because they think it's going to be worth something. But the yeah. problem is it's if just you, inflated in a way. any, any market that you already think it's going to be worth something is not it's going to late. be worth something it's too late at that it's point. already too late when yeah. you think it's a collector's edition yeah. or it's limited it means nothing it has to be something that nobody thinks is going to be collectors and it's yeah. just everywhere and then they all throw it away and yeah. then it resurges through yeah. nostalgia yeah it's usually nostalgia yes and then they go, oh, I remember that when I was a kid. I'm, and then uh, all these 30, 40 year olds buy it up. Yeah. And there's not many left. Yeah. Uh, of course, 2,600 games were made in the millions and millions. There's, yeah. there's a ton of them. Yeah. So that's, that's not it. Yeah. Um, 
there are very few, like Boulder Dash or Princess Rescue, yeah, that are exceptions because of cease and desist orders. Yeah. Those, yes. Yeah. Those are exceptions, but that's for a different reason. Yeah. But in general, no. I don't think homebrews will be worth anything. They're not going to be rare. No, they're just going to be worth what they're worth when they come out. Especially really? unlimited yeah. runs of them. Like Atari Age prints as many as you yeah. want. Yeah. Like they're still printing games that they were printing 15 years ago. Yeah. Which is awesome because then people can experience them and have fun. Yeah. Princess Rescue is an awesome game. It's a really good game. Yeah. Same with Boulder Dash. Yeah. And luckily Boulder Dash is going to be reissued soon. Yes. Yeah. That's but Princess cool. Rescue is not never, never going to be reissued yeah. because that's a different problem. Mm. Um, Boulder Dash was limited because it was limited on purpose. Like yeah. it, it wasn't pulled. Um, but anyway, I don't think so in general. There's going to be exceptions. There yeah. you go. What happens if some, something happens to Albert? Well, then it's probably all going to shut down. Yeah. Re realistically. <laughs> Someone would have Somebody to Somebody will over. pick up the slack. Yeah, I and think they'll so. And like, yeah. they'll just transfer over the, the, the games to whoever wants to do that. Yeah. Um, I hope nothing happens to Albert. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah. He, uh, he's the... the yeah. The Person thing that holds it all together. It all together. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, the farms will go down. Yeah, the store. No. Uh, we're going to finish this off. There's only a couple more questions. Okay. The awards. Zero Page Homebrew has an annual awards for homebrew. It's only annual because it's happened twice. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's going to happen again in January again. It's only been twice. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, what was your motivation for creating the awards? Uh, besides doing the show, I wanted to honor them even more and make it elevate it give them well, awards and it's fun i i, it's just I a fun thing as to do. you say it's community building too it's like getting everyone together watching it talking about the the awards having people yes. vote get the, excited about something yeah i get excited about it and you put Excuse a little bit up. more effort into the stream yeah and you prepare all the little videos and it's yeah. like it's like an event to look forward to as well i think you know yeah. and it's a good it's, time to uh, do it in the slack time in winter with yeah not, not a lot's going on yeah um yeah it's 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 just a fun thing to do and it, it just seemed natural to do it um it's just it's just fun i i, I don't want it to become like oh this game is the best yeah. of this year it's a way to honor the games all the games are so good yeah bring back the stan awards <laughs> from 2003 to 2005 yeah um yeah there was an awards uh show before as well yeah. it wasn't a streamed one it was an online one yeah, yeah the awards yeah. have been great your green screen was great too <laughs> i still have it yes. yeah um uh yeah and arena foot helps helps uh we both do the show the uh he handles a, a lot of the paperwork information the content. information yeah yeah, yeah. He, um so yeah without arena photo i'd be lost to doing it because i can't do it alone yeah and i have help with like the 7800 stuff yeah. too um content that's a good word content it. yeah um there's only been one 7800 game made so far this year they've got four months to go there's oh, gonna no. be like an automatic winner well, this year yeah oh well there's a lot of work in progress ones a lot of really yeah. good ones well, so hopefully good. they'll finish it up yeah um how do you feel during the experiences are more pressure than doing shows during the year it's fine it's just more work it's not more pressure yeah um it's fun mm. um it's not hard to do it's just more more work yeah yeah got to be talking about ricky and vicky yeah uh that was that was last year actually or ricky and vicky it? yeah oh. um it's a mini golf game actually it's the only one that's been finished this year Oh, really? Yeah. Mini golf. Cool. Uh, treat the Zero Page Homebrew Awards as a way to encourage myself to play a bunch of homebrew games. I wouldn't find. Yeah. That's another yeah. great it, thing. It's for the, just sometimes you just need like, these are the nominated the kernel ones. of an event to kind of stimulate you to do a bunch of things. You know, it's yeah. like having it's like having Easter dinner and like preparing the feast. It's like you get to get to look yeah. at things and do things, and you just need these little like landmarks along the way for for certain things. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, because when we narrow like down that. the uh, nominations, yeah, people start playing these games yeah. over again and, yeah, yeah, and maybe yeah. discovering it for the first time. Yeah. Because not everybody watches this show, amazingly enough. <laughs> <laughs> and they just see the the homebrew awards yeah. and they go, "Oh, okay, I'll play the games." Yeah. Um. Uh. Will there be anything new for this year's awards? I was contemplating it, but I'm leaning towards no. 
It's going to be the same categories and things. Uh, oh, there's always going to be readjustments adjustments, yeah. of the categories. Yeah. Um, but I was thinking of introducing some more outside of Atari. Okay. Um, and I was looking into it, but yeah, that's the one. Mini Golf uh, Video 61. Nice. Um, but uh, there's difficulties with yeah. introducing Coleco and Vectrex and Intellivision stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I want to get into it right now, but it's it's more challenging. Mm. And they're very different homebrew scenes. Mm. Like, it's so different. Mm. Um, and so, eh, it won't be this year, I don't think, uh, unfortunately. So we're going to keep it pretty much the same. Three major ones, 2600, 7800, 7, and 5200 slash 8-bit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good night, S. Ramirez. Goodbye. Good night to whoever's leaving. Yeah. Add 5200. Uh, we... Do have fifty two hundred in there? It's With kind, the eight bit, kind of, of. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see how it goes because there's a, it's kind of fifty two hundred, some games, but it's so rare that anybody makes a fifty two hundred yeah. game. Yeah. There's like one. Oh. And it's the same guy who makes them every year, <laughs> so it kind of gets lumped in. Yeah. It's tough when yeah. there's only one person doing it. Um, but yeah, there's gonna be actually there's gonna be a new category this year, um, for twenty six hundred. Mm. games it's going to be it's going to be the best port mm. um that's going to be it a lifetime achievement yeah that came in last year uh lifetime achievement best homebrew best graphics best original homebrew yes that's what it's going to be it's going to be divided up into port and original. original two so two separate categories yeah um and the port is just going to be one category and the rest is going to be best original everything It's going else. to be two separate. Yeah. Like That's... adapted and, and original screenplay. Yes. Yeah. 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 And port is going to be one category. Everything else is original homebrew, original graphics, original sound. Yeah. And 4K, which we've had. Yeah. Yeah. So 4K is one because those are those are a very different beast. Yes. The 4K games are... Yeah. S there's rarely title screens. There's simple gameplay but very very yeah, good it's not quite the same yeah best game about night guys in a category must be included yes yeah that's a new category <laughs> best game about night guys yes <laughs> uh channel slash links if somebody wants to participate support sponsor the sh channel how should they proceed message me just watch <laughs> watch yeah if you want to participate watch. watch subscribe if you can yeah don't have to that's a good way of doing it yep yeah like it do yep. whatever buy some t-shirts um, sure. If you like the t-shirts, yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's nice yeah. and red, nice yeah. and pink. Yeah. Um, is, yeah, you can do all those Best things. Best mole game. Yeah. Best mole <laughs> game. Best mole. Yeah. Um, please leave here the necessary links that you want to disclose. Facebook, it's all zero page homebrew. So if it's on Facebook, it's yeah. whatever. Facebook.com forward slash zero page homebrew. YouTube.com mm. slash you slash <laughs> zero page homebrew yeah. twitch.com forward slash zero page homebrew yeah instagram.com forward slash zero page homebrew the only one that's different is twitter because my name's too long so it's zero zero page homebrew without the w <laughs> brew brew nice yeah where do you buy the t-shirts it is at t public t public t public there we go and we've got three now, three t-shirts, including the Rage Reset one. There you go. Um, and we don't have a website, it just redirects. Oh, and, and there's a listing on um, Atari Age, where we list what games are coming up and mm. what games we've what played. What you're gonna play, yeah. And a link to every single stream that we've ever done, yeah. which is all on YouTube. Mole Crew. <laughs> The mole. The mole. <laughs> the moles. So if you go to actually zeropagehomebrew.com, I think it goes to the YouTube account. Because I don't yeah. have a web page because it's pointless. What am I going to put on the web page? <laughs> I have everywhere else that can no. be used. Yeah. Oh, Zero Page Homebrew is also on the calendar on AVC Online. There you go. Mm. Uh, if you want to leave a message for homebrew programmers and enthusiasts, feel free. Um, you guys are awesome for making all these homebrew games yeah. and I love playing them. So hopefully this show um, helps show off your games some more. Um, and you are the people who make 
make the content yeah. for this show. So without the homebrew games, this is this is nothing. Oh, it goes to the Facebook page. Okay, wow. Facebook page is good too. Tells yeah. you what stuff's coming up. Um, yeah, and if you want to find out about games that are coming out, you can watch this show because we yeah. usually get exclusive releases yeah. um, before they're posted. Yeah. Um, or stuff that's only coming out in cartridge. Um, and so you get to see it here first. Um, which is a huge privilege to be able to to play these games before anybody else mm. and test them out and show them to the world. It's it's really amazing. Um, yeah, I don't know. Keep doing what you're doing, everyone. It's awesome how much uh, activity there is. Yeah, and a lot of creativity. And, oh, my God, yeah. so much creativity. Yeah. Some of these games are like, how did you even come up with this craziness? There's a Facebook page. Thank you, Arena Fun. Um, have you ever visited Brazil? Would you like to visit? No, we have not. Of course we would like and to we visit would, Brazil. <laughs> and uh, we have a friend who's actually going to be coming on the show soon. Gio's coming on the show. Oh, well, she's, she's not Brazilian. To, no. No. She's agreed I'm, to coming on the I'm show. Se I'm segueing. Um, she's Colombian, and she's coming on the show on the next Tuesday you're on. Oh, cool. I think, or the one after. But she, And yeah. we'll announce it. Okay. And, and we were going to go to some south american countries with her at some point well we hope so we hope at so. some point in the future and brazil's definitely yeah. on that list yeah um, i would love so to go be brazil. colombia brazil maybe venezuela all the big ones you know <laughs> well there are a lot more there's than a that, but yeah <laughs> those, those yeah. are the biggest <laughs> one by landmass yeah argentina's oh huge there's too. there's a ton yeah and I'd argentina like goes visit. down to like almost the south pole yeah. It's like really south. There's I would love penguins to go to Chile in, too. I mean, yeah, Chile. There's so yeah. many great countries there. So yeah. yes, I would love to go to Brazil. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, nobody's going anywhere right now, yeah. um, but so we'll have to wait. And yeah. Brazil is 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 pretty rough at the moment. If I if I know correctly. Oh, as far as as far as um, coronavirus, yes. Coronavirus is one of the most difficult in the world, and um, yeah. and just economic wise and unrest and and yeah. just. I, There's I don't, lots of places in the world that are having trouble. Yeah, well, and and a lot of it is because of the coronavirus that too. too. That's not yeah. that not, not Chile. Yeah, dictator. Yeah, yeah. that as well. <laughs> having a dictator yeah. for uh, the head of your country is but not that doesn't great. mean, doesn't regardless, mean that it's not a beautiful place to visit, and the people yes. aren't great. So, oh, the people you know, are always great it's, everywhere it's, you go. It's, uh, you just have to be careful on your timing. I think when you when you travel places, inconvenient. <laughs> inconvenient. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, thank you, Arena Foot. That is the Twitch stream listings yeah. for upcoming shows and all the two hundred whatever shows we've done so far. Yeah. Over the two and a half years, um, have you ever? Oh, did that one. If you want to leave your identification, like a release, for me to create a header for the interview, feel free. Oh, something like James O'Brien is a creator and captive host of the channel. Yeah. That's a good word. Captive host. I'm stuck here. <laughs> captive Let host. me out. That's a great translation. It I like is. That. <laughs> He's my captive host. I just lock him in this room and he, I just, I force him to turn the camera on. And, yeah, New Orleans. Yeah. Never been to New Orleans. No, I would love to go to New Orleans, actually. Yeah. Uh, I'd love Louisiana. I'd love to listen to jazz. Um, I I think there's a whole part of the U.S., especially the southern part of the U.S. Never I would be very interested. Never in been to any through. of the South except for Texas, briefly. Yeah. And yeah, that's about and it. Then Florida, I've, if you count that as South, we, but not really. And um, and I've I've only been there for work, and we went for holiday in Miami, so it's it. It's not quite the same. Going yeah. to Miami is not going to Florida. <laughs> well, well it's going no, to the it beach. is. It's, it's going to the Miami's beach. Miami's a very specific part of Florida. We went to the beach. <laughs> yeah, we went to the beach. No, On we holiday. were in Miami. But yeah. 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 No, there's there's a lot of the southern U.S. we have Mardi Gras, seen. Jazz Fest. Yeah, yeah, I would go for, oh, there the, go. The, the jazz would be worth. Yeah, um, yeah James Earl O'Brien is uh, the host of the Twitch, or the channel. The host of the channel... Good that uh special no that's for a header that's if... i know yeah, yeah i'm making it up right now are you yeah okay james earl o'brien <laughs> is the host of the of zero page homebrew that specializes in atari 2600 homebrew uh new atari 2600 games yeah because it already has homebrew you don't want to say it twice uh, feel free to add any information you think is necessary mm, mm, i've said it all <laughs> i don't think there's anything else that's necessary <laughs> Uh, thank you, James. Well, thank you, Leandro Camara, um, for um, sending all these questions over. 
never been interviewed now for you're gonna have to type them all up for him so there you go no no <laughs> he can use the youtube uh, uh auto dictate and then translate it <laughs> it's way too much work oh my god and that's why we did it on the show because okay. it was just way too much to You're type putting up. it all in him i don't have time right now yeah. so i wanted to do it anyway yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. brazil for fogo to chayo and tron cards tron cards so where they all live yeah is in brazil is all the tron cards um so that is it for today uh let's see what's happening on the next episode can everybody remember what it is i can it's daryl spice <gasps> juniors from spicewares developer spotlight show so we're gonna yeah. have Daryl Spice Jr. on the screen somewhere here, there. Yeah. Uh, coming in and answering questions. And we're going to, and Tanya's going to be playing through all the games. And you, yes. Yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. And I love his it. games are so, it'll be oh, it'll very be spicy. Fun, fun, fun. Very spicy. Yes, very spicy. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so definitely tune in for that. Same time as today, mm. uh, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Mm hmm. Woohoo! Zero page homebrew rules. I watch your show all the time and it means a lot that you play my game. Thank uh, you. Thank, thank you. you. Your game was awesome. Very awesome. Wow, yeah. what a great first game. Yeah. Oh, Spice Wars looking forward to Yay. it too. Excellent. Yeah. That's great, Daryl. Um, and then show after that we'll be playing at least Oink. We'll be trying for the patch challenge on Tuesday. And I have Barnstorming for Friday's show. We'll see. Things get bumped. Things change. Depends on what comes out. Um, yeah, we'll be finding all about Daryl Spice Jr. Mm -hmm. and his development of the games and about him and what he has coming up. And there might be some exciting uh, bonus stuff he has hinted at. May or may not be. Mm -hmm. I hope so. We'll see. So tune in to find out. Yay. Can't guarantee anything. Because <laughs> um, he hasn't passed it to me yet. So <laughs> I can't even guarantee it yet. He's probably still working on it. Mm -hmm. That's all fine. Um, it'll be fun. Very, very fun. We had a lot of fun with Thomas Yanch. Yes. And then we're going to be doing it again with um, John Champeau. Yes. From Champ Games. Yes, yes, yes. In September-ish, Ish. maybe even yeah. October, because we're hoping to have um, some of his new games to unpack. Okay. Zookeeper. Okay. To open up on the show. Nice. And that's what I wanted to coincide it. It's yeah. just about ready, so there will be surprises. Maybe. Yeah just about <laughs> um so that yeah interview with john shampoo in late september early october mm. depends how fast al can ship <laughs> zookeeper to me really yeah um so thank you everyone stay frosty three yeah it's probably not that that would be very cool yeah uh thank you everybody for tuning in today mm -hmm. arena foot spiceware cohog 2600 captain classic uh, Miss Command, VHZC, Dan ABC, and then it gets sparse, and I have to memorize what I've said. Flackets, Crossbow777, yeah. seven, seven, seven. Uh, S. Ramirez2008, did I say that? It's Kev73. Yeah. Uh, VHZC. Uh, yeah, got that. Quite a bit of chatter this time around, which is great. I just posted jumped in there. Didn't even see you. Yeah. Didn't even see you. That's amazing. I was playing... Metal Atari. Metal Atari. Oh, yeah. 1969. Great. Yeah. Steam only. <laughs> 2020 year. Here goes the more. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, uh, I hope you saw the suggestion for a two-player competitive game variation in the chat. Only half the holes, but both players compete for the same moles. Yes. Yeah. Zero mole home. <laughs> Terrible. I love it's getting it. getting worse and worse. Uh, uh, zero great. page mole brew. That's yeah. probably better. <laughs> That's better. That's a better variation of it. Um, so we'll be back on Friday uh, at 6 p.m. for Daryl Spice Jr. Yes. He's from Spiceware. Yes. Playing a bunch of his awesome games. Yeah. We'll probably linger way too long on uh, Draconian. I'll have to play it. Yeah. We'll stop the conversation. I'll have to play a few games now. Um, it'll be a lot of fun. And so make sure you tune in and uh, we will see you next time. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Yeah. See you then. Have a good night. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.